All right, here we go. Time to get started. Who was hanging out here before we went live? That's what I want to know. Sound off in the chat. If you were here early, you had a chance of getting some uh, free memberships. Yeah, Candy and Eric Wyrock and myself donated five subs each. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a cool thing. If you're going to hang out and talk with us, why not become a member? So we donated some. And uh, yeah, so today we're going to talk about plants, which this was not scheduled at all that I was going to release a video about plants in my fish room kind of uh, <laughs> the same week. But hey, that's how it goes. You plan stuff and then things come together. I just make it. I don't say when it's going to come out. So someone had asked, what were some tips that uh, I have for plants in general? And why don't we send them out with uh, the plants that we do sell? And yeah, we've, we've done that in the past. We've had these like little cards and things like that. And uh, I think we need to get them to people before they get the plants. And so we're thinking about adding that on um, with like your order confirmation. So we're going to work on that in the future. So there's that. But, um, you know, tips that I have, they're going to be biased towards my own business. So just know that. So when you're like, this guy basically makes it sound like you should only buy plants from him or a local fish store. Uh, that's kind of because that's true. I mean, I, I've worked 10 years straight to try and be the best plant provider possible. And I believe we are that. Um, that being said, there's lots of other sources you can buy there and just know that things will be a little different. You know, we we routinely, well, maybe not routinely, it's probably the wrong word. We buy from our competitors and uh, we look at their packaging and we make sure that we're still on the cutting edge and doing everything that we possibly can to package plants safe and correctly. So one of the tips I would give people is uh, buy from a place that doesn't make heat packs optional. And what I mean by that is I think it's a disservice to the hobby in general when you go, okay, yeah, heat packs are four or five bucks or maybe three bucks, somewhere between three and five bucks. And you leave it up to the customer so imagine you're brand new into the hobby. You don't really know, like, is it too cold or is it going to be too hot or any of those types of things. And, you know, maybe you you choose not to buy the heat pack and get an extra plant and they all freeze to death or they don't do well. And somebody or not somebody, but then a company goes, well, you didn't buy the heat pack. We have it right here in our policy that says if you don't have a heat pack when it freezes, it's on you. You took the chance. But we found from customer service, you know, feedback that uh, if you let somebody buy like $100 worth of plants and they don't buy the, the $5 heat pack and they get those plants, they're pretty angry. So we don't even allow that to happen. We have an algorithm. We actually paid developers about $12,000 to develop an algorithm for our shop specifically uh, that when you place an order, if it has what we call wet goods, which is live plants, it will actually detect... Um, not detect, it just, it pulls your zip code and it looks at the weather over the next like five days to a week. And it goes, what are the averages? What are the highs? What are the lows? And then over time, over the last five years, we've refined that uh, so that over, you know, we've, we've shipped over half a million shipments at this point. Um, so we have all that data to look at and we know where to set uh, the levels so that, oh, when it's below this temperature, go ahead and we'll use a liner, right? Those liners cost us you know, over a, a buck a piece. And uh, that's the first line of defense for plants is really good insulation, right? They leave our warehouse warm. They'll fight off some of the cold and get most plants there. As long as your plant doesn't physically freeze, it will do okay. A lot of people get really worried when the plants are as cold. That's not really uh, a problem there. It's only when they physically freeze, the cells start exploding and stuff like that. Then the second line uh, with that software is if it's even colder than that Let's put a heat pack outside of that liner So the liner keeps the plants nice and cozy the heat pack stays outside to basically heat the um, You know To heat the the box is my voice lagging for everybody or just uh, iron eagle forge there uh, but anyway the heat pack is there to kind of Fight the cold off for the box because if you have, um, it's like an old kung fu film. Oh no, that's not good. I wonder if there's anything I can do. Well, YouTube's telling me it'd be a good time to insert ads, and we're not doing that. Hmm, what could cause 
voice and stream are not in sync. Mmm. What can I do to fix that? Without starting and stopping. That's the only thing I could think of restarting my computer, but then we have this uh, weird. We have this weird. Uh, I don't know. My wife says my voice is fine. Other people say it's a little off. Some people say it's fine. Hmm. You get that. Well, let me close a few things down. We'll see if, if any of these help a little bit, which I doubt. You know, like Battle Nets open because I'm a gamer. And these other things I can close down. Can't close that. Hmm. I can close Slack for work. All right, we're going to keep going anyway. We're, we're turning this into a uh, it's a listen thing. If you don't look at my face, you won't see that it's off. Um, so the heat pack is not meant to go in with the plants. Because if the plants get too hot, you have much more chance of actually melting plants from getting way too warm. And obviously we can't control how plants move. It could be sitting in a warm uh, building. It could be sitting in your mailbox with the sun beating down on it. It could be sitting outside freezing to death. And so we have to go with these big, uh, you know, these big um, sets of data and, and formulate the best thing. So my first advice is, you know, try and find a vendor that actually cares that your plants are going to arrive alive and not leave it open to, well, you didn't invest in the right things and therefore it's not going to work. But besides that, uh, my other... My other um, tips would be if you're new to plants and you're, you're not having like a lot of luck, leave the plants in the pot, um, especially for things that aren't epiphytes. And so being that you're new, you probably don't know what that is, but like anything that has good root systems, so crypts and stem plants and swords and, and those types of things, because the, uh, the pot itself has some a fertilizer in it already so that's like a, a bonus you don't damage any of the plant roots when you're taking them out so that's another bonus and then typically they're a little bit taller also um, because you have the pot so it gets closer to the light a little bit and that makes it so that it's a little bit more likely to do well now if you watch the video from this week uh, I also put root tabs in mine that's just something I like to do to give them even more of a boost um, but that's not 100% required. Um, yeah, I, I just like to give them that extra boost. Now, plants require, you know, nutrients, and some are going to require nutrients in the water. And, uh, you know, that's what easy green comes in. I got some right here. I put this little, this is like for a regulator, but I put that on there. But, yeah, easy green. It is a good time to talk about the podcast. You're right. Um, if you don't know, we do have this as a podcast. It's on, you know, Apple and Android and our website and everywhere else. And it, if you, if you want to do us a favor, which maybe you don't, cause maybe you're lazy and you forget like me a lot of times, but if you weren't being lazy and you did remember, uh, you could, um, leave us a review on any of those podcasts. It helps us just a little bit more, uh, for more people to find us. And so it's, it's cool when people don't know us as a company or anything and they just find the Aquarium Podcast. Ooh. Free shipping's $80. Too high. Used to be 60 That's right, Janet. We all used to make $7 an hour, too. Um, the reality is, with COVID, the pandemic, other things, uh, shipping has gone through the roof. So when I first started this, if you guys have been watching a long time, it was me and a few employees in the store, and we would ship like, oh, we shipped four packages today, right? And we still have those pictures and things, and and those those packages would cost five dollars and forty cents to ship. I remember that. That same package is ten dollars and twenty cents now, right? Five years later, we're over over doubled the cost. Now, our free shipping thresholds and all that didn't over double. Um, we're just losing money on that, and so. Um, you know, and maybe, maybe you don't shop online a lot. How did I get to the $80 number? You might ask. Well, I, uh, I wrote down every single free shipping threshold to any competitor I consider to be a light competitor. And we were drastically, drastically cheaper. And so then I adjusted it to go, well, how much money are we willing to lose? We're losing X right now. 
we could be losing a little less um, on the shipping. And so that's how we basically adjusted it. It's always a, a money loser. It's how much are we going to lose? Um, and so I don't consider things like Amazon and Chewy a like competitor, even though they sell some of the same products we do. Uh, neither of them sell live aquarium plants, and uh, which that changes the whole dynamic. A $5 heat pack, a liner, all of these things are included in our free shipping if you're buying plants, right? Depending if you need it. Um, and I don't consider them a like competitor because Chewy ran, well, let me, let me see what last year was. Let me look. Uh, that shows revenue, but where's the profit? Hmm. I don't know where I can see it, but Chewy for a long time has run at a loss. There is a big, we're getting into business again, dang it. Uh, there's a big thing that's happened in the last, you know, seven years or so where venture capital comes in, just like venture capital that tried to buy Aquarium Co-op. That's not true. They didn't try to buy us. They wanted to start talking to us and they bought other aquatic companies. So I want to clarify there. Um, they come in, they invest a lot of money and the hope is that you'll be profitable before you run out of money. And so you might have seen things like uh, Casper mattresses and other stuff. You can watch some of these documentaries where they've never turned a profit in five or six years. Um, and they're running at negative hundreds of millions of dollars every year because they're it's 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 to put it simply fake it till you make it if we spend millions of dollars in ads and we get people used to buying from us we hope that at some point they will do that without us using all these ads and uh unfortunately that has really been hit hard with ios updates and other things that 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 mode is doesn't work anymore it's much harder so um there's a lot of things you're going to watch over time there is inflation definitely but then there's also this marketing aspect that no longer works. And then um, shipping's gone up a ton. So, yeah. I mean, what, what you might not know is when you buy a light, let's say you buy a light from us uh, and you live in New York, it costs us 40, yeah, $43 to ship it to you. So it's free shipping to you because you spent over 80 bucks, but it cost us $43 to ship the light. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, back to plants, back to plants. So yeah, we work really hard to ship plants well. We have a guarantee if they don't do well for you, we'll replace them. Um, other tips to actually get that good growth, if you're, if you have, maybe you have a weak light or maybe your light burns out or maybe your plants really struggle in after a week, you're like, oh, what am I going to do? You could also float your plant. Um, that means you do have to take it out of the uh, rock wool in the pot most times and float it right on top. Now it's really close to the light and... Um, then the par level's higher, and so you might get the reds coming back out, or might just be more light than you had, right? Because if you don't know, lights are, the way they work, it's like every four inches on an aquarium, there's half as strong. So if you have, you know, Java, not, well, Java is a bad example, because it's not going to float. Um, if you have a stand plant that's tall, right at the bottom, right? And your light's not quite powerful enough, it might be really struggling. If you float it, it might get nice and long. You go back to planet, and now it's four inches taller. It's getting enough light to keep going. So, once Amazon proved the run at a loss to eliminate competition as a working business model, lots of other com companies followed along. Yeah, I mean, some have success in doing that, Walmart and, and other places, but uh, there's also lots of companies that haven't been able to pull it off. And so we're, we're hoping we won't be one of those because when you don't pull it off, you just go out of business. My voice, I still have phlegm, so pardon me for coughing. <coughs> All right. Been a member for three years. Would I receive my one and two-year coins in the same order? Uh, it depends. So the way it works is the first time you place an order since we've implemented them, it's going to tag your account, right? Uh, and then after that, when you place your next order, you will get coins. Let me see if, if uh, Manon Thacker is your name. 
and I could just look you up and tell you right now if you were going to get it. Hmm, you are? Okay, yeah. I can tell you your account right now. Let's see. Um, you have the right tag, so in theory, assuming all my software works, that we pay lots of money to make happen, um, you would get coin one and two on your next order. And uh, that would be free of charge, by the way, and also free shipping if you do spend over $80. So, mm, let's see here. I had some issues in the past not removing the pots, killed my shrimp and ammonia spike from the stuff the shop put in the vase. Again, buy stuff from good shops like Aquarium Co-op. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if they were... I don't know what you would use. You shouldn't have free ammonia like that. Um... Not sure what would have been there, but most, I also like want to be transparent here. If you have a decent local fish store that does live plants, that's going to be better than our plants, right? We can really serve you well if you don't have a good store. Um, but if you do have a good store, being that they're already going to be used to your local waterway, you're going to buy the exact one you want, take it home, drive it home 20 minutes later and put it in your tank. That's just a much, much better solution than shipping it around the country if we're being honest uh, but if you don't have that then we're in my opinion we're the best option you can use to order plants online but if you got a good local store spend your money there first one because they need it and then two because it makes more sense for you any tricks for scarlet temple i tried four different plants and just can't seem to get it to take it just keeps dying off stems go pale and flimsy uh usually it's always between nutrients and light most people, and I say just most, most people don't have enough light. Now, they'll say like, well, I own, you know, I, and I don't know, maybe, I mean, I was talking to you, Casey, I don't know. Uh, in, at Aqua Shell, I talked to someone who had the same problem, and they're like, well, I own a Fluval light, but then it turns out that they have a 125-gallon tank, and really, you would need two Fluval lights on the side you're growing uh, Scarlet Temple to really get good, um, you know, good growth and, and survivability out of it. While a fluo light is a good light, it's still, you know, as they, the, when I was talking to them, at least at that point, they didn't know that as tanks got taller, the lighting kind of dropped by half. And so, um, you know, that just takes a toll. Oh, I have an idea that could maybe fix or break the stream. I'm going to close and open my uh, app for my video. Let's see. So I'm going to go off the screen for a minute and hopefully I'll come back. I'll still, you can still hear me though. So now we should be losing that. I'm going to open the app again and maybe it'll sync back up. Maybe we'll be lucky. There we go. And I'm back. So at some point you'll see it. There's always a little bit of a delay in case, in case I get attacked by aliens. I can hit like a please stand by button. Uh, let's see here. I have to say, I love you guys. I've always had plant problems with plants, and after watching every video of yours, I could, and getting plants from you guys, I now am at the point where I have to trim every week. Hey, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a good thing to have there. Uh, Asaya says, I haven't gotten my one-year coin yet. After a few orders, I'll try again, but if still no coin, who do I contact? Uh, you would, you would email us, and Condi, Condi, Candy, uh, would take care of that. Let me see if I can look up your account here real quick. This is not how I was going to spend the stream, but hey, this is how I spend my life though. That's what people don't realize. The minute I see a problem, my brain kicks in like I have to solve this for this person. This is not what we do. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Very interesting. Let me look up this channel ID. How do I do that? So on our account right now, it says that You've only been uh, a member for six months, but I can see here on YouTube that you are here for a year. So either A, our software has a bug on our website, or B, maybe some kind of, uh, well, it's, it's got to be some kind of bug. How do I look up? Yeah, it is. And it does say that. So I pulled up your account. So uh, the takeaway from this will be that Candy will probably remind me after the stream to look into this and talk to our developers and figure out why specifically your account is not updating your duration because it works for thousands of people. Um, and we'll get to the bottom of that. 
I'm calling her Condi. Yeah, she's like Gandhi, except it's 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 Condi. Uh, let's see here. Where am I at with this stream? Uh, oh, someone had said, where should I buy plants if it's not from us, but also online? Um, who do I, I'm trying, see, so here's the thing. I can only seem bad if I can't think of anybody, right? Because then you're like, you only recommend yourself. And the problem is because we do research and we order from all these competitors and I don't want to make them seem worse, right? So I don't want to tell you like, well, here's why I don't recommend them because they did X, Y, and Z and that's terrible. Um, so I'm trying to think of, do I know someone off the top of my head? I mean, I, I don't have a good like competitor that I could actually recommend. So short of that, I would say, look into like Aquabid and Planet Tank Forum so you could find other hobbyists that are growing it. And then I can't guarantee if they're good or not either. But, um, you know, it's one of those weird scenarios. If I've sampled all of our competitors and I know I can't recommend them, I could at least recommend someone I haven't tried because they might do it correctly, right? And it's, so let me, let me back up a few steps here. It's not that the competitors won't get you plants that could live because obviously they can. It's the way we see them doing it. It makes us question like, I wonder how often, you know, we, uh, you know, have to have these reshipped and things like that, right? So, yeah. H2O plants, would I recommend them? No, they sold to Flip Aquatics and he's not even involved anymore. So they ship out of the, where, or the Warren, Ohio warehouse. So wouldn't recommend them. Dustin, maybe. I say maybe because he at least has them in the in the the greenhouse, and they're more likely to be converted and stuff. So there's a maybe there. I I, you know, there's some props where props are due there of like you know he's got some stuff going on that I I haven't sampled all of his plants, so I could not tell you like oh, you know, from seeing pictures, right? So I could I could say that from seeing pictures, his Anubias look really good, um, but then like. Me personally, the stem plants being in a bunch, it's highly likely to get damaged stems and uh, kind of rotten bases that you have to clip and, and plant. If they're cheap enough, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, that's there's probably more I can I can think of as well. But uh, you know, every and that's the thing is every every business is on a spectrum, you know, from and there's price points and there's things like that. But you know. Don't forget it, at Dustin's Fish Tanks, you have to pay for a heat tank or a heat pack and shipping is mucho expensive, you know, so that's, everyone's got a different business model, like, hey, this thing's free, by the way, shipping's $25.99, right, or that kind of stuff, and his shipping's not that expensive, so I don't want you to think that, but I uh, do know that everything at the end of the day kind of uh, balances out where you're paying kind of the same prices. By the time you pay for shipping and a heat pack, and things like that but this question was where could you find plants that we don't sell uh, the other thing I would I would point out is sometimes there's plants we don't sell like different views of philandras and different uh, African plants because they're being taken out of the wild and it's having habitat destruction uh, it's not that we can't buy them it's that we don't want to support that so you know do different uh, you know do different research and find the people that you want to be buying from and things like that um, yeah, but I will say all of my competitors are very nice people for the most part. Um, and that's why I never want to disparage them if I can help it because they have a family to feed, they have employees and, and everybody's just trying to do, well, I assume everybody's trying to do a good job just like I am. And, uh, you know, we're all at different places. Is there any relation between less crip melt and colder water temperatures? I've never tested that specifically. I find that the less things I do to irritate the cryptocorn, the less it melts. And so for me, leaving in the pot helps a bunch in my waters. Um, but I, I haven't really tried, you know, oh, let's make sure the water's down at 60 as opposed to 70 because that's harder to do in... Um, in my fish room so i don't yeah definitely too hot is a problem so definitely know that 
you know, they're going to melt more if you put them into like uh, discus tanks and stuff. All right. Does anyone know where I can find all the episodes of the Real Fish Talk podcast? They're on more than the Aquarium Co-op channel, but don't have Wi-Fi at work. Um, they should, I think they should all be on our podcast app. So we also put the Aquarius podcast that Randy does on there, which he's taking a big uh, uh, gap while moving and stuff like that, but he, he is planning to restart it. So those should be coming back. I know a lot of you guys like those, myself included. Um, do I sell duckweed for goldfish? Uh, no, we don't. We, we tried a long time ago. Well, not tried, we did for probably six months. And we stopped selling it, be, even though it was like printing free money. Because as you've seen in my fish room, like I, I got I got duckweed. We had lots. We we actually were selling so much. We were buying it from farms, in pounds. Uh, the problem for us is at that scale where we're let's say we're shipping to. I'm just gonna pick a number and say a hundred people a week. Uh, at that time back then, we're buying duckweed. We couldn't get it to where ninety five or more out of the hundred were having great success with the duckweed. Uh, it would get too cold or too hot during shipping. It doesn't like getting wet, which people don't realize that, that duckweed doesn't want to be wet. That's why it's on top. It, one of the best ways to kill duckweed is keep the top of it wet, just like water less and other stuff. And so that makes it really hard to ship. And, um, you know, we don't think it's acceptable to have more than a 5% error rate on a product. And so we will choose to not sell it and find a way we could do it better before we would just take the money. Not everyone has that, uh, you know, that take. Some people, some companies might go, well, 90 out of 100, 80 out of 100, 50 out of 100, like whatever it is, right? Um, but we want our reputation to be known for quality and stuff like that. And it, I feel it undermines it if we have the products that never did well for us were water lettuce, um, duckweed guppy grass it's not that it can't be done it's that it's hard to do well at massive scale right and so that might be the difference and i'm trying to think of a different analogy but it might be that maybe dean can make the best guacamole in the world right and it's really good so maybe i could ship one person out of here per week the best duckweed ever but the minute we have to scale it to a hundred shipments the minute you know dean's got to make a hundred gallons of guacamole a week and he has to use more employees and he doesn't have time for each avocado to go is this going to be the right one uh, and all of that then you get lesser quality it's still not going to be terrible but it's not you know it's not that 100 percent. maybe oh it's 87 percent at scale for 100 gallons of guacamole where it would have been 100 if it's one small batch and that's why we see things you know in the world like oh this was made small batch and you know uh, farm to table and locally made and all these things when they're not expanded uh, typically are better and so you know and I, I think to be fair if I only had to grow one tank of plants and sell um, to five people my plants would be way better than you know the the thousands of people we sell to every week now like we we struggle with that because it's like oh we want better but we also need more and this would be a great <laughs> dean says my guac is the bomb it's true uh you know it, it's we would love to sell way more types of plants and everything but we don't want to sacrifice quality and what that means sometimes is inventing te new technologies inventing new ways to keep the plant and ship the plant and you know lots of experimenting to just go oh one or two more plants are now shipping well and uh, that's, you know, we'd, we'd rather get it right than just ship a bunch and settle the, um, you know, settle when the, you know, settle up when the dust settles, so to speak. And there's a lot of companies that will do that. Like, hey, we, we pride ourselves on not having a ton of returns. If we're getting a lot of returns on something, we investigate why. Are we not showing the product right? Are we not teaching them right? Are we, are we misleading them somehow? And, you know, whereas like maybe clothing has very high return rates. Um, and if I was in that space, I'd be doing everything I can. How can we bring this down? It costs us money. It costs the customer time and energy. That's never good. And so uh, we just generally take the path of let's not sell it if we can't sell it to what we think a quality would be. 
Uh, and sometimes we get that wrong. We, over the years, we, you know, our first auto feeder uh, broke that 5% threshold. So we, we read, redid it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any others that we've had to pull from. We do a lot of testing ahead of time. So hopefully we don't have to get the marketing campaign going and then pull it back down going, oops, we were wrong. Um, yeah. I remember someone earlier was saying, does, does Facebook ads and marketing actually work? It, it kind of does, honestly. Um, it, it's, what's interesting is it, it does work, but not at the rates that are profitable. And so, well, for a lot of businesses, like an aquatic business, right? So imagine, imagine, well, I can give you real numbers. The real numbers is it takes me somewhere between seven and eighteen dollars to get a brand new customer off of facebook that goes okay you have to have an aquarium till the point they actually order from us right and that depends on what we're targeting are we trying to sell them easy green that costs a lot more than if we're just trying to get them to buy anything like buy this hikari food that you're already buying and so the problem is right if they come in and they spend twenty dollars and they go hey i'm going to buy these two foods if we spent $7 to get them to do that, right? And then shipping, they paid $7, but it cost us, ooh, 11 to ship it. So we're into it for 18. There's $2 left. There's a percentage we have to pay for a credit card, right? There's still tape and the box and things like that. And then there's, um, we also have to pay the employee to put it in there. So if we're lucky in that scenario, by the way, maybe we clear 50 cents you know, or something like that of like, oof. And the problem is over time, that customer, uh, to convert them a lot of times, you had to give them a discount too. And so at $7 acquisition costs off Facebook, you also had to give them 10 or 15% off, in which case now we're at negative $2. And that's where, okay, so now on that wholesale, you did acquire a customer for negative $2. That sounds pretty good actually. Like, hey, it's only $2 per customer. You know, I'll, I'll buy a hundred thousand costs two hundred thousand dollars. The problem is, it didn't buy you a repeat customer. It bought you a customer that was willing to try you out at uh, a ten or fifteen percent discount. And then if you don't offer that to them again, they don't buy. They go to the next Facebook deal they get offered, and they do that. And so um, then you're just left with a negative two dollar transaction that never goes on to the next thing. And that's kind of what happened, to like Casper Beds and other things. Like they were selling beds. At on average, because you had a hundred day guarantee and everything, across all the beds they'd sell in a year, on average, each bed they sold with marketing and all of that and the shipping and the amount of returns they would get. So if they got two out of ten returns, right? The, for every bed they sold, the profit was negative on average, like a hundred and six dollars. And the goal in that company would be over the years, you'd find ways to make it cheaper to advertise. More people would know about you. Hopefully, word of mouth would do it. Uh, you'd find a way, or maybe a, a better partner to ship it a little bit cheaper. You'd find a way so that they only return one out of 10 instead of two out of 10. But the problem is, each year, if that goes on and you're not finding the ways to fix those things, you're just further eroding the company until they're at a point where they are now, which is dang near doesn't exist. I, you know, the documentary I was watching, they closed down your Europe. Uh, shipping and things like that and um, so yeah while the advertising does work in that you can physically make a sale it doesn't make a company money on average now there are kind of some exceptions to that if you've been on Facebook or anywhere you might see like oh those look like comfortable sweatpants I'm a sweatpants guy right and you click in you're like $162 for sweatpants this is nutty I'm a sweatpants guy because they're like 20 bucks or less. But they, you know, in clothing, you might have to spend $52 to acquire the customer. So if you have a maid in a country and they cost you six bucks for these sweatpants, you spend $52 in customer acquisition. You got to ship it to them for free. And then there's a return for free and another one shipped out for free. But at the end, you might be like, hey, we made 20 bucks on $162. The problem comes, how many customers are there for $162 sweatpants? That's that's the breakdown in a lot of these shoe companies and sweatpants and clothing. And, you know, it's it's 
you hear people make fun of like $50 white t-shirts. Like it exists. Do I ever patent your new products or do you find it's not worth the effort and the expense? Uh, we don't patent our products, no. Um, most aquatic things have been patented, patented in the past and you have to make them new enough to be able to justify why they would have a patent versus um, in the past, right? So something like a sponge filter, I, I think they patented the original like triangle dirt magnet ones in the 80s maybe? And so there was like a long run where you couldn't really, um, you know, make other sponge filters and it's because they patented, I think, like the airlift technology and the sponge and that kind of stuff. And then when, when those patents run out, that's when innovation can start again. And uh, yeah, so we don't because, I, one, I don't want to, I don't want to spend my time protecting what we've already done. We get copied by competitors all the time, um, you know, from just even website design to uh, copy and newsletters to whatever, right? Uh, we, we've, we've even had people take our pictures and our descriptions straight off our website and put them on their own for for products. Um, but we, yeah, we could, you know, fight to our death in court to prevent some of that kind of stuff going on, or we can spend our time um, working on new stuff. And that's what I prefer to do. I, you know, fighting out in court might save us money, but it doesn't make the hobby better. And so... I realize there's circular logic there that, well, if you protect your money more, you'd have more money to do more things. True, but uh doesn't sound fun. And I like to try, I try to have fun when I, where I can. Do I have a recommendation on where to find a spray bar attachment for my power head? I want to disperse the flow. Hmm, I don't know. I would probably buy some crap on Amazon and try it out. Um, or if I had an extra spray bar laying around from a canister filter and just adapt it with a piece of tubing. Or... I would try, if it was me and I was really trying to do this, I would probably buy like half inch black furniture grade PVC and make a grommet that would sit between that PVC and the outflow of the power head. I would have a black cap on there and I would start drilling tiny holes and I would see how that goes. And then I might make some of those holes a little bit bigger. And then I would go, dang it, I made them too big and now it sucks. Okay, let me do it again. But, you know, I would have bought a bigger piece, and the second time, maybe I would have had luck. Alrighty. Can Cooley, can I put coolie loaches in with elephant nose fish? Hmm, that's a good question. I think in the short term, um, if it was a small one, maybe. But in the long term, I wonder if they would ever swallow one. I don't think I've had that... Uh, that interaction. So I got a I got a dry beard right now. I gotta put some moisturizer on. That's what I hate about when it gets cold out. Finally, you know, it didn't didn't rain here for like forever. Skin was dry. Now it's finally starting to get cold, but now the the heat in the house is drying out my my beard. Gotta put some on that. Looking for a treatment to, for red blotch disease. I don't know what red blotch disease is. You can post it on the forum. We could take a look at it. Um, it. You know, it could be, oh, you got a bacterial infection. It could be like, oh, you actually, it's more of red gills than anything else. It could be, um, you know, oxygen deprivation. It could be, you know, ammonia burn, pH burn. It's, it's hard when you describe a, an illness via, like, something ambiguous. It could be a few things. When's the next restock on plants? Uh, usually two to three times a week. The next one hmm, might be Tuesday. Which vendor? Maybe Wednesday. The problem is the vendor delivery dates have changed with hurricanes and stuff in Florida and that kind of stuff. We've swapped some of the shipping days and some of the um, some of the vendors too. So. I'm not exactly sure what our our schedule is at the moment, but we do get three shipments a week. I do know that. Um, and part of the problem is you're probably going, okay, but when are you going to get plant X? And then just because um, 
we order doesn't mean we get it. I mean, most times when we're out of a plant, it's because the farm's out, not because we didn't order it. We have, you know, analytics for, for miles. So it'll be like, hey, you sell 92 pink flamingos every three days, order 462, and then we'll go to order 500, and then the farm will ship us 26. And then, you know, and then what happens is you go, hey, they came in that day, and then, hey, we sold out. So the best thing you could do is go to the website and put your phone number in. You'll get a text when it comes back in. However, know that it's based on who signs up. And so what I mean by that is if there's 500 people ahead of you, you're not going to get a text message until we've gotten kind of like 500 of them in stock, assuming everyone bought one. Um, but that's the, the best way. And, and do know that plants can be seasonal. So things like uh, banana plants and uh, Apontagetans and other stuff, depending on where in the world they come from, sometimes they're wild, where like banana plants are basically invasive. Um, and then Apontagetans, you know, if they hit them, have another bad weather event, they can be gone for a few years, just like we kind of had that happen with moss balls, not a weather event, but just gone. It's hard to find actual submerged grown bulbitis. I've been looking for a while and it's the humerus grown ones look completely different and will melt off and convert to submerged growth. Yeah, I wish we could find a good reliable source of uh, bulbitis. One of my favorite plants, honestly, but everywhere wants to sell mini bulbitis, which is not the same plant, not the same hardiness, not the not as good. That's what I'll say. All right, now we're going to do, we're 42 minutes into this. Uh, I want to do something different that I've never done before. I'm going to attempt to not sound dumb. All right, let's line this up. Where's, where's my stuff? Right here. We're going to the internet, people. It's a dangerous place out on that internet. Make sure we're lined up. Can I? Yeah, this will be good. We're going to take a look at a house. Now, this house I saw for another, I think, fish person, I don't remember who, on Facebook. I had to look at it. The disclaimer I need to put here is that I'm going to make fun of it because it's crazy. Now, that being said, this was someone's home. And this will be someone's home going forward. And that's not necessarily a good thing, but I'm fascinated by this home. And <coughs> in order for it to be entertaining, I think I've got to make a little bit of a game of it. Any home can be fixed. Everyone, when they move into a home, they make it their own. And uh, I think this home would have been amazing if I didn't have a wife. Like, I could see myself... I'm going to call it moving into this bachelor pad and uh, having some fun. Now, why? Why would we talk about this on the aquarium co-op live stream? That seems weird. Because it has built-in aquariums in this home. And, uh, yeah, that's that's why, basically. It's got aquariums and a pond built into this place. also has a pool, too. And so, you know, without further ado, let's take a look at this thing. And we're going to play a game. All right, here we go. Make sure we're good. So here we are on the Zillow. I don't know if you guys are like us, but somehow my wife loves to look at Zillow and I, I'll waste a few hours, you know, every few weeks looking at what could be. Um, she didn't find this one and I just found it on Facebook. So here it is. This this house right here, you got to look for it. $385,000. We're going to click in. They don't have pictures. They only have the 3D tour. But it is a... Uh, can we, can we, yeah, here we go. A custom-designed, ultra-modern luxury home from roof to basement. This is one of the most unique and breathtaking homes you will ever see. You will be saying, wow, from the moment you drive up to the seven-car driveway and see the zero-maintenance Timberland siding. Inside, you will find a floating staircase, natural stone slate flooring throughout, new carpet, Professionally painted throughout, the most unique and stylish chrome kitchen with all new supplies or stainless steel supply appliances, standalone custom electric glass cooktop station, built in double ovens, and fish tank behind the sink 
that you can enjoy from the great room. You can have your own private gym, indoor spa with hot tub and sauna, laundry room on the second floor, the basement is an entertainer's dream. Out back is a custom designed rock oasis. With a stocked koi pond, some of the premium features and updates include two furnaces, an oversized, I don't even know what that is, HWH at 16 feet. I don't know what that is. All updated Legrand electrical outlets and switches, premium custom fixtures, lighting, and LED throughout. It's a must see. Are you guys ready for this? This is this is special. I hope you're ready. We're gonna click into this home. All right. So we gotta we gotta take it all in here. So first, you're in this nice neighborhood. Hey, I'd live here. This looks like a great street. You got a basketball hoop. What's not to like? Take it in. I think we all can appreciate. Hey, that's a that's a good looking neighborhood. Nice trees. Beautiful sky, got some, you know, nice green yards, some landscaping, and, and here's where, uh, here's where it starts going wrong. You take a look at this thing. Wait a second. Are these all block glass windows? Do other people do that? No, no, other people are normal. They have normal people windows. You like to open the window sometimes? Not in this house you don't. We only get block, block glass windows. So we can see where it starts. Let's take let's take a step into the dining room, shall we? The dining room. Keep that in mind. We're going to the dining room. We're here. The dining room is right here. That's through the front door. You open that door. You wipe your feet off on a piece of uh, old carpet that's been cut with your block window. Ooh, and then you can see the aquarium. Now, do you want to see the aquariums first because this is an aquarium business? Or do you want to see what were they thinking first? That's the question. That's the question we have here because they're both great. We're also going to play a game. Because I stumbled upon this halfway through and I don't know the answer. But the game is, how many TVs are in this house? Because you have one in the dining room right here. Right? Also, don't miss that every angle in this house kind of has to be at an angle. It can't just be up and down. No, you got to put some, some freshness on it. Right? There's angles everywhere. People want the aquariums first. Some say, what are they thinking first? Well, maybe, maybe we'll, do the, we'll do the hybrid. Let's pretend you live in an aquarium. So here you are, you're sitting in your dining room, right? You put a, put a table in here, you're watching some TV, and then between dinner and dessert, you're like, I gotta work out. That's what I need to do. So we're gonna go into the hallway. You got a bathroom, we'll, we'll, we'll go in there in a minute. And you got an exercise room. Oh, let's, yeah, you're right. For, for dessert, I gotta hit the gym. I'm now in my gym with uh, mirrors. And I don't know what to call it. It's kind of a, a, I call it like the Guy Fieri look, but the squiggly steel or aluminum between. And you can see here like, wait a second. Isn't that the entranceway in the dining room? That's right. You could sit here and watch the family that you don't have eat dinner while you work out in this glass aquarium and become a human spectacle. But don't worry. If you couldn't see the TV that's in the corner because you blocked it with your staircase, there's another TV right here. You get one in the gym, so don't worry. You're lucky. Carpeted gym? It's not bad. I just don't know that I want it. I don't know if it's a feature of my dining room. That's the only, uh, yeah. The weird angles might be wide-angle lenses. You would think that, but there's more to come. Don't worry, Aquatic Addiction. You will see that, yes, they've used much too wide of angle lenses, and this is 3D but it also just has weird stuff in this place. So yes, that's the human aquarium, as I'm calling it. 
the exercise room. You get little toys. I think that's a better exercise mirror right there on the back wall. You flare against it a bit and uh, get your exercise in for the day. But let's say, you know, you you didn't make dinner, right? Because I understand. My wife says she's not buying the house. Um, so let's say, you know, because you can't convince a family to move in here. You had to buy Taco Bell for dinner, right? So you got a bathroom close, though. Don't worry. We got one right here. We'll go in. You're already seeing some of the magic. One, I hate it when you can't use things because of the door. The door blocks. You got a glass door, by the way. It's frosted. Hey, don't worry. No one's looking at you, right? I will admit, shower looks decent. Might be, you know, I don't know how big it is because it's a super wide-angle lens, right? Which I realize I'm giving you all uh, motion sickness. But when you do eat your, your, your Taco Bell, if you get a little bit too much of the hot sauce going, don't worry. Your toilet paper holder is on fire. You have flames. It's not every day that you get a flaming toilet paper holder. Just some of the nice little modern accents they've built into this home. It does look like a good toilet. And then sometimes you're going, you know, maybe a lot of people are coming over to my house. So I need to put in a commercial... Uh, what do you even call this thing? Paper towel, paper towel holder, with the the stainless steel bin for your for your enjoyment. And then you've got this weird sink modern art thing. Yeah, so you know, kind of kind of puts it together in a broken light. Don't forget the broken light up there. But hey, through this room, just in case you needed more water. Go in the hot tub. Ooh, we can see there's a person here. I wonder if that's the realtor. Is that the owner? Don't know. It's a ghost, maybe. But in here, you've got another TV. Don't worry. You got your indoor hot tub, which that's actually pretty cool. I mean, I, I think it instead of being outside in the cold, because you're in Michigan, you got one, you got one inside. You also get a sauna. Hey, that's cool too. I'm not. Wait, okay, I thought there was two TVs for a second. I was going to lose my mind. So you got your other TV. So yeah, that's, you know, part of the downstairs. You know, you got your dining room off to bathroom and gym. But let's let's take a look at the kitchen. We'll start moving our way towards these, uh, you know, <laughs> someone said I don't spend a lot of time looking at flight catalogs. True, maybe they're flying all the time. All right, so we're back in the dining room slash entry. We're gonna we're gonna hop on over to the kitchen. Now there's a lot to take in here, so let's let's breathe in. You got this big old aquarium. Used to be a saltwater aquarium. We could do anything we want with that thing, but okay, that's pretty cool. I got I gotta admit, I'm not sad to have a giant aquarium. But look at these angles. That's not a lens doing that. This is like a weird. Oh yeah, we need to we need to yeah we need angles in here. Let's make this thing diagonal, and this diagonal. We need more triangles. That's what we need. Triangles. I'll show you more as we get there. But, have you ever seen stainless steel cabinets? Because they're here. You've got this big stainless steel fridge. And over to the uh, the left here, you have the, the abyss. That's where you like you put your mixer and some of your other stuff. And it's just gone. Because it's so far in the back, you'll never see it again. But don't worry. While you're cooking, you can watch TV. you got another TV right above the ovens. Right? You don't want to be too far from a TV. You could turn around. And watch this one up here in your uh, dining room. But instead, you got one, so you can you can watch there. Now, this is the counter space in this place. Limited to basically none. You, you're not allowed to use the counters basically because they're gonna you're gonna have a toaster and a microwave and a loaf of bread, and then you're out. You, you don't have more room than that, so you're not actually allowed to use it. Maybe you know. Maybe by now you've realized you're going. There's no stove, but they did say they had a standalone stove, glass top. That sounds luxurious. Let me turn around. Oh, there it is. That's right. So you can go straight like hibachi stove, glass top, straight to table. Maybe that's it. Or maybe you're cooking breakfast and you're working out. And you want to keep an eye from the gym straight over to your, your glass cooktop right there. So, yeah, I mean... It's not my move. I don't necessarily put it in the middle of my great room or whatever this thing would be. But, you know, 
I can't knock it. I haven't tried it. Let's take a peek in the, the family room, shall we? We can get a better look at the, uh, the stove. You can kind of see the, you know, you, you kind of have to you put your shoes on, you put your jacket on, you hop in the car, you drive over to the stove, and then you realize you forgot the cheese for your, your nachos that you're making on the stove, which no one does, but I couldn't think of anything else on the fly. And, uh, yeah, another, another metal door here with uh, the squigglies. And don't forget, another TV, because, you know, you need one in the family room that's this big in the corner, right? Now, when we look, you got the step. It's known to be a killer, you know, one time a month, you, you nearly break your ankle. Someone does in your home. And then you get the weird angles again on your, uh, on your aquarium. But why would you tile the end of it? I feel like if there was going to be anything you would do, it is not tile the end of this thing. I would definitely want to look through there and see this ginormous aquarium. But hey, I didn't make this. Yeah, they tiled one side of the tank. Oh, you better believe they tiled that side of the tank. That matches the bathroom. That's the bathroom tile work in the shower. They had some extras. Now, you won't know this yet because you haven't lived the dream that I have and I've already seen this, but you have a nice luxurious view in your family room of your garage, which the garage actually looks pretty sweet. It's pretty big. TVs are maybe for security cameras. Same with the frosted glass windows. Maybe more than just frags in that tank. Could be. We'll never know. But do take a look at this. At some point, they decided, all right, we got slate tile floor. We got like slate rock wall going on here. And we got the little hearth and whatever you want to call it. But you know what would really make this worse? If we put a triangle of carpet in here. That way, if we ever attempted to use this fireplace and brought in firewood, we would for sure stain the crap out of that carpet and make it look terrible the instant we even thought about doing it. You'll get a, you'll get a better angle of the, the carpet triangle because, you know, I, I got to be honest, I came into this room too and the first thing I thought, not enough triangles. There are not enough triangles in this room. You, you kind of lose it. You step down. You, whew, you step into... into uh, like rectangle world, and ooh, I don't know, that's not somewhere I want to live. So let's go ahead and uh, hop into, I think this is, maybe they call it, you know, it's more fa family room, no, entertainment room, I don't know, I think it's the in-between, the transition. So then you get this nice look, right, in your aquarium, you get all this nice plumbing right here, ooh, nice. I don't know why they cheaped out, everything else in the, the house, they went stainless steel, I mean, even the sconces and the lights up above, they're all stainless steel, but not this cabinet, oh no. Maybe they were just trying to break up the pattern. You know, we need some wood, we need some slate, we need some carpet. But yeah, you get that that wide angle lens goes for days. All right, let's turn around. You do get another giant aquarium in the entertainment room. Let's let's enter, shall we? We are in the entertainment room. You get this giant cylinder aquarium, complete with uh, the squiggly line aluminum or steel or whatever this is. And again, I'd actually be jealous to have that. It could be pretty darn cool. It looked like it might have been set up as salt water. I don't even care. That thing looks giant. I bet you that thing's like at least a thousand gallons. That 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 thing's actually pretty sweet. All right, that's that's a fair assessment. The little junior says wood is for the salt water tank. I could see that. Maybe you get some oxidation oxidation on aluminum or some rusting going on stainless steel. I can understand that. That's some logic. I, I can't even fault you. Um, we, we, you do get the nice accent wall. You got a steel wall here. Although I will push back and go, why would you do this aquarium with steel, but not this one? They were both set up for salt water. So, I don't know. Then you've got, uh, you know, all your electronics here. You know, it's got to be like satellite, cable, you got to have, uh, you know, your, your server, everything. Four, don't, I'm going to count this as a TV because you got your projector here. And sometimes you're like, oof, I could see outside. Oh, no, let's drop this giant screen and just have me, my aquarium, and my giant screen. So pretty cool. I like it. Imagine, imagine the algae growth right next to that window. You can see it from outside. I mean, I, I don't know. This could have koi. I don't know. I feel like you could do something fun with this. I know that I would hate owning it of like, oh my gosh, I got to get in that thing again, or this is going wrong. I'm sure 
you know, you just start thinking about where's plumbing? Is there a sump? But where would the sump be? I you can't hide anything. I don't know if I actually would want to own it versus, hey, I came with my house. I'm not going to pay to take it out, right? You want? Let's take a peek outside before we go. There's more to explore in this house. There's two more floors. This we're still on the main floor, if you can believe it. Uh, if we hop out to the pool, which they call it a pool here, but in the description they're saying it's koi. Is it a pond? Is it a pool? I'm not sure. Let's hop out. So you get this thing. I feel like it's more koi pond because I feel like this right here is just eye gougers and, you know, pinching my toe and that thing snapped. Turns out that piece of rock wasn't a diving board. You got this, uh, like, I don't know, waterfall-y thing and then falling over ladder? I don't know what that part is. But uh, ooh, you get more block wall or more block glass in the in the old garage too. But yeah, the, I, my guess is they had leftover stone for the outside, and that's what they did on the family room accent wall when they're like, "Yeah, let's do that wall, not steel on this one, not drywall like the other one. Let's go straight to the to rock." And the reason I think this is not a pool because no one wants to walk around barefoot with all this jagged stone and in between so i just i don't i think it's koi pond that i'm i'm labeling it koi pond here all right let's go back to the front so you can get you get a nice uh fake clamshell here by the way I don't know. oh I, well oh yeah don't let me driveway here we go yeah so you get this nice fake clamshell here you get a little bird bath nice garage though i like that garage nice driveway they were right you can park seven cars we're back in the front. Remember when this neighborhood looked normal? Maybe you got all the security glass. Doesn't look like a rough neighborhood, though. It looks awesome. Looks like your neighbor would, would jump your car for you and, you know, yeah. But we go back to the entrance. We're back in the dining room. And uh, let's go downstairs because, you know, maybe maybe you do use that outside thing for a, pump, for a pool and you still need a pond, right? And so... We got to go through the kitchen. I think it's a family room. And then we're going to go, they call it another family room, which brings you downstairs. So what you what you missed probably, because you, you haven't been through this home uh, like I have. Martin says, no no TV for the koi pond? Just you wait, buddy. Just you wait. What What is the TV count? Anyone got the TV count currently? Um, how could you spend the money on what those would have cost and done them so poorly? I don't know. This is a real unique house. Real unique. Um, but back to the, the stove here. So imagine you're frying up some bacon and all that, and you're getting all the splatter over on this wall, and, you know, maybe you just catch some right in the eyes. You come up from the family room, because this is a set of stairs right here. Maybe the carpet now has a layer of grease because you're cooking. You tumble right down all the way because you got these uh, carpeted stairs right here. Or maybe, maybe your goal, what is this? What is that line? Maybe they, maybe that didn't exist. And they're like, we need to cut a hole in this floor and put another room in. That's a weird transition right there. I don't know what that is. Uh, but maybe you throw, because you're right up here is your, your stove. Maybe you throw stuff, bounce it off the wall, and it lands to feed your koi pond that's below you. Because now we're, we're downstairs in the family room. And uh, don't forget, you got three more TVs. You can watch your koi, but maybe you got three different nature channels going, or maybe it's uh, you know maybe it's three security cameras. Three seems a little excessive for security cameras. I'm not sure. Maybe it's one for each sports team. Like maybe you just have all the the people down here, and you got someone cooking upstairs, dropping the bacon grease on them. You're watching you know Saturday morning cartoons. You got the baseball game on. You got the tennis open. You got a game of pool going on, and then you got, uh, you know, you got Lord of the Rings trilogy all day event going on on the big screen here. Taking a little little zoom in here, I was tricked because I thought I was like, "Wow, this house is huge! This is kind of an amazing deal for the 385k." Two pool tables? That's crazy! Look how big this thing is. And then I realized, oh wait, more mirrors. Because sometimes you don't have enough mirrors in your house. You always want to see yourself. 
It does have a rad floor drain. I'll give it that. I'm not, you know, I would definitely line this thing with aquariums. It would be a great fish room. Um, in this weird uh, blue aqua zone. Is that another weird angle? I don't know if that's purely, I feel like, yeah, that's got to be. We got to get the angles in. Look at this thing. I'm telling you, it's, it's always angles. That's not, that's not lens. That's, that can't be lens. I really think that it's angles. Let me look at it from this angle. It really looks like that's angles. Doesn't look, uh, makes it look huge though when you use these giant wide angle lenses. But yeah, you got angles here. Maybe you fit your couch. You can watch your TV. You got three more TVs up here because, yep. And then you got some, it's almost like metal halides and stuff up there. So I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of seeing all of the missing blue panels up here, but you do have like the ultimate control room for power and other crap in here. I wish we could have got a little sneak peek. There's no way on this 3D tour to get over there. It leaves me wanting for sure. What's with the floodlights around the TV? I think that's a, a sweet sound system. That's my guess. Let me see. Do we get a better picture here? Kind of looks, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Could be lights. It's a weird, uh, it's a weird speaker setup too, if it is. Don't know. That's a feature though, I'll tell you that right there. It's angles. That's right, everything's got angles. We haven't even got, keep in mind, you've seen all this cool stuff. You haven't seen the master bedroom and bathroom yet or any of that kind of stuff. This is all just still... Public domain friend comes over, check it out. So we're going upstairs. Gonna go up the stairs. Ah, bacon in my eye again. And then we go over here. I just want to know where you store stuff. There's no storage underneath this thing. There's no like hanging pots and pans. Oh dang it! I need something to stir my taco meat. You know, again, make the trek. We we'll pull it out only stainless steel. What if it turns out this guy only used, guy or girl, whoever, only used plastic stuff, even though everything else is stainless? All right, back into the, the dining room. We're going up the stairs. Up hallway stairs. Oh, primary bathroom. Let's take a look. Where are we, Where's orientation? All right, up the stairs. Up around, come up. Here we are. You don't see that every day. Tile, tile uh, molding, I guess. I didn't put any molding here. That's a little weird, but tile molding and tile accent wall? Question mark? Different tile accent? Got to tie in that, that floor, I guess, right? What we got over here? More accent wall. Okay. Well, let's take a trip into the bathroom. All right, all right. Black toilet paper. Check. Got it. Oh, I've got a TV above me. Good thing. Got my TV. We got a... We got a is that a light or is that a window? I think that's a window to make sure we maximize the glare on the TV. I think this is like a medicine cabinet out of, I don't even know where. And then, all right, weird sink. Got the, got the door. Pretty good shower, I would say. I mean, I'm, I'm not mad at that shower. Ooh, it looks like they got, this thing is out of like the Skyway catalog. I think it's got all the buttons and gadgets, and you know it's got to light up of, like, a color. How warm is it? Oh, it's blue. It's too cold right now. Ooh, it's red. Too hot. Ooh, that nice green. That's the color I need. You got the, the like, the half glass door and the, well, maybe that's just, that door looked really big there, but I think that's wide-angle lens. Don't forget, you got another, like, piece of carpet here. I actually think that's a, that's a rug, but it does look like that carpet from downstairs. And no, no flaming, uh, you know, no flaming bathroom trips up here. This is, if you, if you, you know, if you got too much of the hot sauce, you do that business downstairs. You don't bring that up here. This is the, this is the bathroom for kings. Black toilet paper only. Super bizarre to me. I, I've never seen black toilet paper. Maybe that's, uh, maybe it's like imported silk toilet paper or something. I don't know. Ooh, nice accent. I was going to dock points. They got two different like fan options. I, I would like to see them both be stainless steel. We got, maybe that's, you know, 1950s house. Didn't take it out. Instead, put another one in. Oof. All right. We'll, we'll go into the master bedroom. How do we go there? Right here. 
Get a nice look. Commercial stainless steel garbage can. That's where you, you put your uh, aluminum cans, maybe. Get a little get a little more into this bedroom. It seems huge with this lens. Get in there. Oh, I okay, so these, I think these are bringing in uh, the air. I think it's air system. So you got fart fan up here and humidity, and then the other one was air system. So let's get in there. Come on, go. There we go. We're in. We're inside. In the bedroom. Another TV. Because you, you, you can't, you know, if you go more than 12 feet without a TV, you could miss something. That would be a travesty. Got this door. Ooh, we, we brought in the uh, the slate wall accents and the, the kick molding here. And, uh, ooh, nice transition from slate to, yeah, you know, I'm too lazy to wrap that around the room. We're going to keep that old, uh, like, apartment been painted 2,000 time look. For the, the molding down there. That's a good look. I don't really know what that is, but... And then, my personal favorite, don't put any doors on the closet. Just leave it open. We, we ain't got no time for, for doors. So... Master bedroom right here. A couple windows, I think. I think that's... This one's definitely a window. I think that one's a window, too. So... All right, let's go back into the hallway because we, you know, we dipped into the bathroom and we took a detour into the master bedroom. What else we got? We have a weird, creepy closet thing right here with like a pull-down shade. Again, we don't do doors here. Doors are not allowed when it comes to closets. You can put 10 doors in a bathroom. Maybe, maybe they ran out of money and they couldn't afford more stainless steel doors to give them the, the zigzag thing there. So let's, let's travel a little bit. Let's bust into this bedroom right here. Boom. Wide angle lens, definitely playing tricks. Because at first when I walked into here with this uh, 3D model, I was like, dang. Okay, they got a closet on them. You could put everything in there. And uh, the minute you kind of change the angle, you're like, oh, wait a second. That's a normal closet with no doors. Doors slowing me down. Okay, so they, they kept the, the white molding here. Got some floor vents, it's an air return. Kept the white. Ooh, okay. Brought the stainless in in the corner here. I can't go more in to, to examine that, but lots of air. Two different air vents. Okay. No shortage. Where are we at? Oh, another bedroom. All right. More stainless steel desky things. Ties it in. Two more TVs. Where are we at? Where's TV count? Someone's got this TV count. Someone's got to have it. Now, maybe maybe they're more security cameras, but boy, howdy. They look to me like they're more like, uh, my guess is, like, gaming? Question mark? Maybe? Yeah. You ready for the, uh, like, the, wow, oh, I missed this fan. I thought it was just some light. Oh, no. This is a ceiling fan with lights. That definitely came out of the aerospace catalog on a flight to, where, where are we going to? We're going to like uh, South Dakota. Don't know. What's a mirror? Something's a mirror? These aren't mirrors. These are, these are TVs. I mean, you got the mirror finish on here. The game room? I mean, they did, yeah, they did label as bedroom. It could be a game room. Nothing says game room. Like this. Features. So we did bring in, we brought in the uh, the tile work around the door, right? Carried it over around the closet. And they said, you know what? We are tired of closets. Let's go ahead and build us a laundry. We got the, we got the washer dryer combo. We got the furnace. Yeah. That's right. Luxury. Could be a bedroom. Snuck in a little carpet right there. You might have missed that before. That's that's a little carpet. You don't want that dryer wiggling off of there. And you go, you know what? I think we still got some carpet left. We should build a little step stool to make this taller. Because we probably had to do some weird plumbing thing where it had to go through the floor over here. Let's use like half a tile. We'll, we'll grout it with a little bit too much grout. And then on top... Yeah, let's do a piece of carpet. I think that's the move here. We'll, we'll tie it together with carpet and the stone, stonework. 
And uh, <laughs> Dean says, I was working on fish shakes. You made me stop and watch this house tour. Dean's brain is probably just like this close to aneurysm from this because he used to build houses for a living. And I, I'm, I'm fairly confident that this line right here is actually angled. And it's not, because this is, like the lens isn't distorting this at all. No matter what way you turn, it doesn't distort the right-hand side. But I think on this side, they, you know, they got mm, angles. And then on this side, I'm not sure what happened. Like the lighting is a little weird over here. But it's it's kind of a train wreck a little bit. I think it's just lighting though. You know, when you when you spend a little time with this though, like this is my second time walking through digitally, you, you learn all the features. You go, ooh, isn't that nice? A glass door that just slaps straight into that that uh, slate right there. Now that's a good idea. Just look, go ahead and let that thing doink right on there. Scratch it up. Mm-hmm. You know, don't don't swap it. Don't have it so that like the one that lifts from the top is over here, and put this one where you couldn't just slap and you know shatter that thing. That would be a terrible idea. Looks like down there might be a water detector. Maybe uh maybe that's the the smoke detector. I don't know. You got a towel there. You know, maybe that's for, like, uh, quieting it down, you know. Any other smoke detectors? But, yeah. Oh, yep, there's one. So, maybe that one is a, a water detector. How's the attic? I don't know. They don't... There's no 3D tour of the attic that I know of. I'm sure it's got angles, though. That, you know, that... Probably a diamond-encrusted uh, ladder up there. It's just so... You know, to me, on one hand, it's like... You know those houses you see where they only buy the stuff's being discontinued from like a Lowe's and Home Depot of like, that's just enough tile work to do this. That's just enough flooring to do that. But I, I feel like this was, maybe it started that way and then they were like, you know what, we just gotta, we gotta run with it. We need more steel. We need more tanks. We need indoor pond, outdoor pond. Let me go down here. We need a living room right here. To be fair, the cinder block wall, or not cinder block, the glass wall, if it was more like, didn't let people see in, I'm a little more okay with it. But the fact that it's just, it's kind of, this is the worst window. You can see through it in the worst ways possible. So like you don't get a good view, but people can totally just look at you eating your Taco Bell making your runs straight to the the flaming bathroom. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what this thing is up here either. Maybe it's sundial on the ceiling. But yes, you too could own this for only $385,000. You could you could enjoy this giant kitchen. with standalone V-shaped glass top stove. Don't forget Christmas morning around the hearth. You got your carpet because, you know, your feet are going to be cold. It's going to be cold on the slate. So, you you know, you, you pull your chair up and you put your feet right on the triangle. Make sure you're all evenly spaced around the fire of candles. Hey, that's not a bad price for real. I 100% agree. I 100% agree that the price is not bad. That's the thing. It's like, I, I do love making fun of it. But I was telling my wife, I was like, to be honest, you know, that 385. You know, my, my, my response to her was like, if we didn't already have a home and I wasn't married, I could see myself moving here. Here's my YouTube career. Great. I got two tanks that are constantly going to be a problem that I can make videos about of like, man, this thing, who knew light was going to come through? Who knew we had to change this? You got to, I, I do think the bottom pond is rad. Go on, 3D model. I do think this is pretty cool. Not so much the blue. I, you know, to me, I would want this to be either stone or something non-reflective, right? By the way, there's like 4 billion lights. I think, I think this is actually for landing airplanes upside down you just land them on your drop ceiling and that's what all these lights are for but I, I do think this could be very wait is that blue is that reflection up there or is that just like blue paint 
we'll never know. It looks crazy. Um, but I do think I would really enjoy this koi pond. Or because it's indoors, you could do something tropical too. It looks pretty big. So, I mean, I do think that, you know, who knows if they've got enough dehumidifiers and stuff for this thing. It could just be like above this could just be like black mold. We don't know, right? This is all virtual um, just having fun. But I, I do think at 385, and the house is pending, I think, right now. So we've all missed out. But I don't think this is a bad buy. I think in actuality, you could make a lot of changes that would make this home quite a bit better. However, there would be... Um, there's, there's some things I just I can't get past. And that is like the kitchen design is terrible. I would find a way to rearrange this somehow. I want, you know, I really want the stove to be like right here. Or it's like the stove was supposed to be here. Right? Why couldn't, like it seems way better to me, drop the dual oven. Right? You, you, can't, you can't be cooking Thanksgiving turkey and something else in here because you can never take them out. You don't have any, you don't have any counter space. You're never coming out of there. But you go and you put your, your stove, your normal person stove right here. You got your oven open and close. You can at least set some stuff. You know, you're not cooking today, so you're setting the mail on that thing, whatever. You got a little more counter space now. You put your your combo range hood. Wait a second. So, yes, the more the more you think about it, the worse it gets. So you get your range hood microwave combo up here and not the TV. But I just realized you're cooking all your bacon splattering in the eyes you come up and down from down below you throw a couple pieces down your koi there's no vent hood though you, if you do any actual cooking in here it's, it's not leaving there's no there's no way to get that out of this house i mean i guess you open up this door maybe maybe that's your move i don't know looks like a dodgy hollywood film set i don't know it's kind of like as i told my wife i was like if you buy it, you almost have to like keep the essence of it. You buy it as a, this is like a statement piece um, and not so much, what is this little thing? It's a little like crazy, I had an extra piece of glass. Let me put that in this little bowl right here. Maybe that holds your soap. I don't know what that thing does right there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think you have to like, you just embrace it, right? You got to. There, there's some things you got to fix, like the kitchen. That's it's a rough, rough kitchen to utilize. And you know, maybe you, you come over here and you you put some uh, privacy film or something between the, or you make it like a, maybe it's an office. You turn that into an office and you have your high level business meeting so people can see in but can't hear you. I don't know. It is fixable though. Now, it, well, fix, yeah, fixable. I'm going to call it fixable and optimizing to where a human would want to utilize this. Yeah, you don't, you know, the first thing I would do the minute I got this place is uh, get a second flaming toilet paper holder for upstairs. That's number one. Got to do it. And then from there, you know, use your hot tub and uh, your sauna. I mean, there are really cool features of this house. There's no doubt. Like 27 TVs, you got that. Turn the gym into an aquarium. Yeah, I mean you're the you're the you're in the aquarium. You're the human inside of here, and people just line up to look at you. Then when they get bored of you, they go look at the aquariums. Yeah, I wonder. I so badly want to know like how much room between this and the wall is there? Like, is that just like a dirty spot and you can't get in there to clean it? Is that I think that is. It just it gets better with age. I think this is pieces of tile from the ground on the underside of the, uh, the stairs. So you got the tile under there, and then you carry it here. Hmm. You never know what you're going to find. Got the nice uh, wood and, and stainless steel. I, I thought I saw somewhere there were only stainless steel. But what do I know? All right. <laughs> Zen Ginger, don't forget to fold the bottom of that TP into a triangle. That's right. When you get your maid, you got to be in triangles to fit the angles of this place. 
yeah, that that description, that's exactly why I can't really trust realtors. It's like the way they describe this place and the, the front shot, remember, like this is the home. Like, oh, 385000 that's a nice home right there. And then you read the description like, oh, it's modern and nice and you can park seven cars and you got a pool and you got, you know, you got the, the, the nice neighbors. Look at this. This is a dream. And none of your none of your neighbors know the mystery that is inside here. All right, well, this thing was fun and took a long time, and I've I've probably bored everybody, but you know, it's not every day you get such a such a treasure to observe that has aquariums. It's aquarium related. But I do believe Michigan 385k. I was single. I'd be uh, I'd be figuring out something to do with that. Two giant aquariums. Those are big aquariums, and an indoor pond, and an outdoor pond. That's that's like a YouTuber's dream right there. That's your studio. You don't. That's maybe that's it. You buy the home next to it to live in, and that's your studio where you invite people over to hang out, eat Taco Bell, all the you know all the 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 dude bros that you bring over. You're like, hey, you got to use the the toilet paper that has the flames, you know, the, the respectable people, they go upstairs and they use the other one. Was it 13? Was that the official count on TVs? All right, well, that's, uh, it, yeah, I, I, something I'd never done before. I feel bad because that's someone, someone was proud of that and uh, someone's probably buying it. And maybe they're, you know, I'm hoping they're going to fix like that kitchen and, you know, but yeah, this is where you start the aquarium co-op streamer house. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's, uh, that being said, if I owned it, I would cherish it and embrace it. I think you got to lean into it. I feel like you'd almost find, you got to put more angles in that thing. Although there was no angles inside the aquariums, a circle aquarium. Why is that thing a triangle? <laughs> Yeah, the official count was two, two too many. 13 TVs and one overhead projector, 14. I'm calling it 14. 14, I count the projector as, as a TV. You're using it for movies and uh, stuff like that, so. They're over it now if they're selling it. You don't know that. Maybe they're, maybe they got foreclosed on. We have, we don't, well, I guess it would probably say foreclosure. I have no idea, but um, in my mind, the way it plays out is I got a girlfriend. And the girlfriend is like, nope, this place, mm-mm. Nope. I'm assuming it's a guy. It could be a girl. I have no idea. I have no idea. Could be a a, a 72-year-old married couple, or it could be a bachelor pad, or it could be could be any of those things. I don't know anything about it. But uh yeah, 14 TVs and zero closet doors. Priorities. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, they were enjoying nature daily. I mean, if each of those TVs had some nature on it, maybe maybe that was a thing. You couldn't be too far. You know, and the, the worst part about this kind of stuff is while I'm having a bunch of fun, what'll ha you know, sometimes what happens like down the road is someone will email me and they'll know more about the story and they'll say like, oh yeah, it was a, a person and their daughter or their kid and they have a sensory issue and if they don't have this special thing playing in the background, the person can't learn. And then I just feel like the ultimate worst person in the world. So I, I want to finish up by apologizing if it offended anyone and it was meant to just have a good time. And, uh, which I realize doesn't fully make up for that also. But, um, yeah, it's, I actually, if I had a reason, like if our warehouse and stuff was in Michigan, I'd be finding a way to buy it because the giant aquariums and the two ponds, those are, I would put those as assets. I would like that in my home. I would change a lot of other things about it, but I, I do like those parts of that home for sure. So. All right. And now for an easy transition, Corey, how do I check brine shrimp hatch rates so I can tweak my recipe? I don't know if there's going to be a good... Dean did some experiments when we were testing uh, the brine shrimp I think what he, what was he doing? He was, I feel like, weighing the eggs and then 
straining the brine as best as possible using um, sieves and then weighing the hatch out. And that was the best way we could get apples to apple type water hatch rates versus competitors and things like that. And, and testing, we tested different salts, we tested different heat and that kind of stuff to see if there was any big differences while we we're hatching ours. And uh, we didn't really find any of that. So that's why we didn't like super narrow it and be like, it must be this temperature with this salt, with this thing. Uh, it was pretty forgiving. Uh, but I think that's the best way you could quantify your hatch rate because you're not going to sit there and count to a million. So I think it's got to be weight. And that's in the aquatic hobby, pretty much it's always done that way. Like feeder goldfish and stuff, when you go to a wholesaler, they're not counted. They're done by weight. And so on average, a feeder this big weighs X. We weighed it all without the water. We know there's basically this many feeders. That's what we charge you. All right. Could you imagine if someone walked in on that part looking to get their rainbow fish question answered? Yeah, that's, yeah. It, but this is more of the stuff I want to do. Not so much I mean, this mean-spirited stuff, but, you know, after, I don't even know, what were we, like, seven or eight years on YouTube? You, you start running out of, like, meaningful tidbits and not that you can't, oh, this would be a good idea, right? But um, filling in with some other stuff from my life makes the show a little bit easier to put on. And, and it's, you know, stuff for us to talk about. Because if you just do a fish stream every Sunday, there's not a whole lot to talk about the you know the, around the dinner table. Like, how was work? Yep. Talked about fish, you know. Uh, whereas, like, oh, yeah, people, I think, had a good time with that house. Crazy house, right? My wife will, again, say, we're not moving there. And, uh, yeah. All right. If I ever win the lottery, I'm buying a shark tank and building a house around it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think a lot of us would do that kind of stuff. And the thing is, like, my house is quirky. I mean, it looks like I'm in a yurt pretty much. Like, everyone's got different tastes. Uh, I happen to like kind of nature and wood and, you know, that kind of stuff. But, you know, if, let, me, let me make sure that I'm doing due diligence here and making fun of myself wood trim around the, the windows and like these stairs but you'll notice down here there's no wood trim when we bought the place there was no wood trim and i've never done anything about it and i've got carpet up here but i think it's here in the bedrooms and there's nowhere else in the entire house um but i just don't care and and that guy or girl whoever was probably the same thing you know like ah, i don't care yeah I don't think it's mean-spirited, but shared confused appreciation for the out-of-the-ordinary aquarium home. Yeah. It's a... Uh, I think that's a thing. You don't see a lot of big aquarium or, like... <coughs> I think um, I would do the same thing. I would look and I would show you guys if I found a, a house that had, like, a full fish room. It'd be cool to analyze that, too. Just to be like, okay, you're getting this with that. Anything new happening in the fish room? I just made it in. Um, not a whole lot. I'm, I'm in this struggle right now where we've been planning for like a year with the lights and, and stuff and travel. And, and now is like the season, right? Of like, there's no travel for me until December. I go on a vacation with my wife. But I should be setting up aquariums and all the custom aquariums arrived and all of these things happened. But my lights are delayed because of COVID in China. And so... I I strive for efficiency and it's like hurting my soul to be like, well, maybe I just set it up with a Fluval light, but then I'm buying another Fluval light. I'm opening it, knowing I'm going to replace it with my light uh, in like two months. And so I'm trying to like, well, how do I keep doing stuff in the fish room, stay energetic and stuff, but not waste money because I don't like wasting money. And so maybe I'll find some other prototype lights or something and keep moving forward knowing that I'm going to replace them and not spend more money on more lights. Would I increase or decrease my fish keeping after I retire? 100% decrease. I think the first thing that's going to happen is the biggest purge ever where it's like, yep, I got two aquariums or one aquarium. 
and it'll be like that for like a year, maybe two, and then a tidal wave of hobby will come back because I'll miss it so much. So I'll need to get away from it a little bit purely to crave it again because right now it's just there's a buffet of aquarium stuff every minute of every day and you're like overdosing on like yes um getting away from it a little bit makes me long for it again and uh i think that's that's what would happen if i actually was able to retire which i don't think i'm gonna retire i think i'm just gonna step down to like uh like my goal honestly is to at some point step down from the owner slash CEO role and just sidestep into like product person, some marketing, some hanging out with you guys, like that kind of stuff. And not so much, um, you know, over the last couple of years we've been working on, so it's less HR stuff I'm involved in, less accounting stuff, less all the, all the things that don't 100% need me. And we have great people in those roles. Um, you know, one of the first things we ever did was hiring candy, getting candy in the customer service role. It's not that I don't want to hang out with you guys because I love hanging out with you guys. It's that uh, I don't, well, it takes over my life because, the you know, you guys saw me do it in the live stream earlier today. The minute they're like, wait, this person's having a problem. I should try and diagnose this right now. And that happens every day of every hour. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I would check customer service. Is anyone angry? Can I help them right now? Pretty soon. Oh, I was up for 90 minutes from 3 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. going, well, I want to get this email out before this person wakes up and goes to work. And, uh, yeah, so it's mostly just moving in that direction where I'm just more free, if uh, if that makes sense. I need more of Corey's kooky house tours. Yeah. I mean, my wife and I, we do love to just look at houses because it's interesting. And she, she loves it a lot, and I'll humor her. I mean, I do like looking at some but I, I do routinely have to, like, this is the last one. I actually have stuff I got to do, you know, I got to work, I'm working right now, or I'm watching this. Um, but it's, it is fun to go, what would you change? Or, ooh, that's really cool. Maybe we need to store that in the back of our brain someday. Who knows? As a small business owner, retirement for me will be working only 40 hours a week. Yeah, uh, my goal that we're, I'm trying to harness is 20-ish. That's what I'm trying to get down to over the next like five years. Um, hopefully it's tomorrow. I would love it if it's like, yeah, 20 year, 20 hours and my days are filled with the most important things that I have to be plugged in on and not so much the stuff that like, well, someone else should have been doing that probably. Because um, if I was spending 20 hours making videos, that'd be a good use of my time or marketing or developing products. But there's a lot of just chasing down like oh where's this flight for this thing are we going to go to this uh convention are we going to do that is our vendor relationship good enough with these people right now are we doing this or that so <laughs> i need a wild coin when are you going to costco next oddly enough you bring that up last time i was at costco which i rarely go to costco we went last week i think so i'm probably good for a month at least um i i had said like this is how my employees could get one it's like they're going to have to spot me at like a, a Costco or something where my wife convinces me to go. Because normally I'm like, I don't have time. I think I went to Costco and Walmart looking for my favorite dip that they didn't have, which was the Burnt Ends dip. It was a limited time and they replaced it with something terrible, some kind of fruit dip. When am I going to catch stuff in the wild again? I don't know. We've got the invite to go in January and somewhere around April. But if I'm being honest, I, I have this big struggle on my plate right now of who am I going to say yes to? There's, there's like conventions that want me. There's stores that want me, our retail partner stores. There's clubs that want me. Uh, and then there's things like YouTube wants me, right? We should go here and film this and we should do that. And part of the reason I want to get down to 20 hours of work is so that when I do go film and do these types of things or events, it's not as brutal on either side of it. And so that's what we've kind of um, been able to diagnose that if I work 16 hours a day, the minute I lose four days to going to Aquashella, there's not really room. It's, you know, most people, they might be able to work eight and then they can go, okay, well, I'll put an extra two hours in to make up for, 
kind of being getting ready to go, right? I'm going to go on vacation. I'll make sure that my team is ready and everything. And you work from eight, you work 10 hours a day for the week before you go. For me, if I'm already working 16, that starts becoming like 18. And then when you get back, it's 18. And that's just, it, I start, my body starts falling apart because I'm only sleeping a few hours. I'm on different time zones. And so if I was only working like four hours a day, and you go, okay, well, I'm going to go, you know, on this trip for two weeks in Europe and film. I could bump that maybe up to six hours a day. And then when I get back, it's six hours a day. And that's much more sustainable. And so being that we're not there yet, I'm really trying to, I'm trying to put a limit on how many times am I going to travel and at what levels, like three conventions in seven days. I mean, I proved I could do it, but it was not worth the stress of it all so uh, i'll be trying to avoid getting myself into that situation anymore have you ever thought about using some i'm guessing foam using some oh wait using some form of sponge in the process of packaging fish for shipping um, my thought is it could be used by the customer as filter media yeah if, if we were going to get into uh fish shipping and shrimp and, and that kind of stuff we would we would probably have um like what I would do is I would use um, our ammonia pad and I would be cutting strips for the shrimp to cling on to and, and all of that. And, you know, you could do pieces of sponge filter, but part of it is sponge filter uses up bacteria or I mean, the bacteria uses up oxygen and you'd really want to make sure that um, you had the ratios and everything right, so you're not like, oh, we ran out of oxygen and we killed the bacteria and we killed the fish. Like that would be obviously a very bad situation. So a lot of testing we need to go in to perfect that. But uh, yes, I would probably do some of that. And and we have thought about this is probably that 95% scenario of we could sell some live sponge filter or bio rings or something live to jumpstart people's tanks they could order. But how many times? would we get bad feedback from people of like, you didn't use a heat pack or you did use a heat pack. It got too hot or too cold. And there's no quantifiable way to uh, prove there is bacteria, right? So even though you can be like, I took it out of Murphy's tank, it's 100%, it's got bacteria. And if someone drops into their aquarium and it doesn't cycle fast enough or add bacteria fast enough, then they claim like, oh, you sold me a bad product. And so I, I try not to, I try not to get us involved in things that, we can't prove one way or the other um, because that's the weakest spot we can be in. I always like to prove things and back it up with facts from us because it's the easiest way. I don't have to convince you that I'm not lying. I just show you that I'm not lying. And bacteria, I don't think I have the skill set to be able to prove it to everybody easily enough that it would be uh, have bacteria. So I think... Uh, I got fixed when I did the the camera reset, but right after that camera reset, I did the um, house tour. So maybe that fixed it. Who knows? Do you think green water can throw off an ammonia reading? Maybe the algae dies and causes the misreading? You can get ammonia spikes in green water. Green water consumes it fairly fast also. Um, you can also get very high and low levels of pH and oxygen in super green water. So those are some things to, to know. But in general, I always watch fish thrive in green water. So I'm not, uh, not entirely sure it's all bad. All righty. Hmm, that's interesting. Andrew says, have I missed something? I'm sure this is the house that Brian Barcheck, the reptile guy, has bought to have as an Airbnb for his subscribers to hire. I have no idea. I never even heard of that. I'm not a reptile guy. I mean, I know who Brian Barczyk is. He's like that snake guy or whatever. I think he, wasn't he, didn't he used to work or something like that with Snakebite TV? Maybe? But yeah, I don't, I never knew he had an Airbnb or whatever. I thought he had a, doesn't he have a, is it a store or reptile zoo? Something like that. I thought that's what he had. I just, just use Fritz Turbo Start. Yes. So that's a very good example of a product. I love Fritz Turbo Start. Love it. Always carried it in the uh, in the store and, and that kind of stuff. We don't now because of the wholesalers kind of made it 
impossible, but I would love to ship that, but it goes right back to the bacteria. How do I ensure, even though that Fritz said they did a bunch of testing, but how do I prove, that's the thing, how do I prove it instead of you got to trust me and the scientists? How do I prove that, you know, using a liner and not letting it freeze in the cold or get too hot in the summer, how do I prove that? How do I make sure that it's going to actually do what it needs to do? I, I know it will because we've tested it, but how do I prove it? And that's the thing is making $25 on a bottle of, of Turbo Star, which is awesome. I do love that product. Is not worth it if Candy's got to battle it out twice a day with people that are, you know, irate because their fish died after they put in Turbo Start, threw in 27 Oscars, and then the outcome was bad. And so um, that's why we haven't done it. Even though Fritz would love us to do it, I would love to do it, honestly. I do really believe in that product. I've seen them making it. I've toured the place. And by the way, Fritz Zyme, uh, the liquid bacteria and Turbo Start, it's the exact same bacteria, different concentrations. And so the reason why we sell, and I stand behind Fritz Zyme, it's the same exact thing as Turbo Start watered down. And the reason it's watered down is because it's now much, 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 much more shelf stable. Um, so we sell a ton of it. So it's super fresh. That's something else you kind of want from a, a liquid bacteria is a, a younger culture, I guess, would be. Um, but in those higher concentrations, which is Turbo Start, that's where you can run into some problems of, oh, it's running out of oxygen or something like that. And so um, that's why we just we double down on the Fritz Zyme. And I do love that product, though. I love both of them. And I got to meet the team of people, and I got to see how they were doing it, and I got to see the giant crazy jugs of it that uh, people that are much smarter than me are buying for public zoos and everything. Not zoos, but aquariums and everything. So if they have any disruptions, they can come in and add the bacteria. And and uh, so, yeah, it's kind of it's crowdsourced. I believe them, and in my testing, it's already always worked well. Uh, that being said, I've tested other bacteria stuff that hasn't worked so well, um, like some different liquid gravel vac products and stuff. It, it never worked in my testing. However, Turbo Start, I'm a very big believer in if I use it and it works for me, it will probably work for other people. If I use something and I don't see the result, then I report that to you guys and I go, hey, like a great example of this would be, I love so many of Fritz products, but then I also, I, me personally, I've never gotten there, is it fix ick to cure ick. So that's why we don't sell. There are other people that bring on the full line, you know, other online retailers bring on the full line of Fritz stuff, but I won't sell it because in the testing in the store and in my fish room, both of them did not cure ick. And we were able to do it with Hikari Ick X. And we did, we had a control group. We split, you know, a, a bag of Cardinal Tetras into three tanks. We treat one with Ick X, we treat one with Fix Ick, and we treat one with nothing. We repeated that, I think it was like four or five times. And the results were always the same. And so uh, it could be one of those things like, okay, of the Tetras and the different things we tried, it didn't work with any of those, but it would work with everything else. But I don't want, um, you know, I, I I don't want to have to have multiple products like, well, this this ick, ick medicine only works for these groups. And this one works for these groups. I need something that works for everything so that you don't have to hold two or three different bottles of ick curing things and... Uh, hoping you're using the right one. Instead, if you just have one ball that treats all of them, I think that's a better deal. So you want to know why the background play doesn't work for member-only videos? Because membership on YouTube is still like half-baked. They know it's a problem. They need to fix it. It's just not, you know, when they're looking at it going, oh, we have 12 things on fire, and that thing is just an inconvenience. We'll put that on the list, but their list kind of, it never is going to get down. Oh, I shouldn't say never, but it's, so far, hasn't made it their list of like, hey, we're going to fix that. How do I feel about single-use plastic? Uh, in a perfect world, we would not have it. But there's a lot of a lot of things that have to change in the world to get rid of single-use plastic. From even just medical stuff to the way we ship stuff. Like, we, 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 where we can, we spend more money. We buy, like, our pallet wrapping. We buy eco-friendly stuff. Our bags at the store are oxygen they dissolve or break down with oxygen and sunlight. 
That being said, like there are answers for fish, right? Okay, we use a plastic bag now. We could start using buckets and there is ways to make those transitions over time and we hope to be doing that. Uh, but you have to educate and train people and fight the opposition. Like a great example from earlier in the stream, people want to, uh, why is your free shipping so high? There is a portion of that. The reason I set it at 80 is because small shipments are bad for the environment. We still have people that will order just one item several times a week. And when we had the limitation of you must spend at least $15, people were angry. But I want to only buy one thing and make it worse for the environment. It's all a sliding scale, right? We've all had that thing where you you meant to buy all the stuff. You forgot one thing and you really need it. You got to order it. And then there's people that are just like chronic abusers of it. They're like, well, it only cost me five bucks. I'll just keep ordering one at a time. And, uh, you know, if, if I could have my way, everybody would place like $100 orders it would be in the most efficient boxes possible. And if every business was doing that, at least in our country, if not the world, the footprint of uh, the amount of delivery people and trucks out on the road would, would go down by quite a bit. Um, but that's a very hard thing to orchestrate. And so uh, everyone doesn't want to be the one business trying to do the right thing and goes out of business. And so it's almost like this, mob mentality of like no one will do anything until everybody's doing it. it's kind of it's not just like well i'm gonna watch the one guy and then i'll be the second guy it's kind of an all or nothing thing for everybody and that's a, a hard a hard um thing to do what do the bags break down into i don't even know i just know they break down that's that's as like i, I know i researched it when we were having them well, well first we it was a law we weren't allowed to sell have normal well that's not true we were the city of Edmonds where the store was they were outlawing bags for like normal retail like if you bought an iPhone but because we were selling food and fish we were allowed to do it but we you know we go okay well if, if most of the other stores around us are going to use these bags let us start doing that uh, and then and then they were really hard to get because not a lot of people were using oxygen and sunlight degradable bags we we're paying a ton for them so then uh, we had a made in China because we were having troubles getting them. And so we had a giant pallet of them made. We bought something like 10 years worth of bags. It was, you know, it was like $5,000 in bags. It was not good. But that was an investment towards being better. Um, and, then, and then they actually outlawed single-use plastic bags altogether in Washington State, I think. Maybe just our county. So technically, I'm like kind of out of compliance, but if anyone wants to come and talk, I'm going to be like, but what is the answer? So I started out by trying to do the right thing and get auction degradable bags before this was the law. I bought like 10 years worth. Would you rather me throw them away? Like that's clearly worse for the environment than using them and preventing the use of a single use bag or I mean a non single use bag. So. It kind of falls in that line of, like I tell you guys, use what you have instead of buying brand new. And if you have to buy, new, buy brand new, then buy ours, right? So same thing. We're much better off using what we already have instead of uh, throwing them away and buying a more than one used bag. But obviously and for sure, the minute we're out of those bags, we will buy the appropriate bag that is not only a one-time use. We also launched our... Uh, insulated tote bag coolers and everything. That's one more step towards the right direction, um, which you guys can buy online or buy in the store. So, you know, it, it's all a, it's all a, I think over a, a period of time, if people are trying to make some steps towards it, it, uh, it will help. I don't think it's an overnight thing. I don't think everybody will do it. I don't think, you know, it, it takes time. So, Paper straws are trash. I 100% agree. It changes the taste of drinks and all of that. I, on average, given the choice, I will not use a straw than use a paper one. There are times when I, I do, but I don't like the way it, it changes um, the taste of stuff. And then when the straw gets mushy and so that's in my, in my mind, right? If I know I get a bad use out of this straw, I don't enjoy it. I'm better off not using the straw. 
um, and just saving that footprint altogether, right? But sometimes the drink will already come with a straw in it and you know, have like just the top paper on it or they'll set it down on the table and it gets wet and I pretty much know they're not going to put it back. Once it hits the table, they're not really putting it back in their pocket, so it's going to get thrown away either way. So I kind of, uh, you know, I'm torn with that one and I don't always remember to be like, if you have paper straws, don't even bother, they're terrible. Um, so yeah. I wish I wish YouTube would show us if a user has hit the like button. Oh no, then there'd be like mobs of people. I know I'm guilty of that too. I know I've I've watched videos before and they're like hit that like button. I'm like oh my gosh, I didn't hit the like button until now, and I have you know and I'm like I've been like in my opinion, my personal opinion, if you spend like two hours with someone, hitting the like button and leaving a comment, those types of things, they help so much and it literally costs me nothing so I, I will hit that button if I, I basically use like buttons as like a tip I guess like yeah that, that was good stuff let me let me leave that like button if it's and if it's something I don't like I don't leave the like button even if I like the person I kind of want it so that it's it's my way of voting I guess of like yeah I want to see more of this kind of content I don't really want to see more of that and I'm hoping somewhere in the background the algorithm factors in that like for me so that I would see less of the stuff I don't like and more of what I do what's my ideal neon tetra setup probably lots of like Anubias and Java ferns and crypts I'll, you know pick a, a boatload of uh, neon tetras and then a nice Corydora down below and some like uh, nano krill pellets from extreme that's kind of my my jam I would say In Florida, I was given a straw that was made out of raw pasta. That, yeah, that sounds not good after a little bit. Got to hit the like button before the video starts. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a realist, and I, I do believe you should only leave a like if you enjoyed it. I also believe you spend a lot, a lot of time with something, uh, you probably like it. But if, you know, and that's, how do I, how do I put in that in context? If I liked every video I ever watched on YouTube, YouTube actually wouldn't learn what I like. And I want it to learn what I like so that it will hopefully deliver more of those videos for me. And then also um, we'll, you know, provide creators feedback because you can see it on the back end. You can know like how many likes something's getting and that kind of stuff. And so. You know, I, I would rather you guys actually like what you like and not just like out of, well, I like this person. I, I get it. I, I do, you know, I, I could understand that. Um, but I, I think it's a useful tool. YouTube Shorts got broken this week and dislike won't help. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I personally just hate short content. I I, I keep consuming it, trying to go, it's to me it's like trying brussels sprouts or something like ah oh, people love this let me try it. like no oh it's gross so bad no and then you know you try it again like no it's still terrible how do people eat this and so the shorts are the same way of like well there's some people that like this and so then i try and consume some and i'm like i just mm, nope not good and then i try to make some of my own of like maybe if i'm creating some i'll see the value in it and then i'm like Nope, I don't even see the value in it myself. And so even though, like, I I know they're pushing it. And I know if, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm really torn. I know that it would be good for business for me to do it. But I don't like doing things in business that I don't like. That is a fault of me. It's also what makes it so that I can be good at things too. Like, I know when Randy and I were having a meeting, he was losing his mind based on the shirts that we're making our new shirt and i'm so picky i'm like nope the material's different the feeling of the inside of the screen print is different and they you know he called up the manufacturer and sure enough it's made in a different country it is the same model it's going to have slight differences the way we did the the screen print it's a little bit different than a five color print 
And so I made them change some things. And now the latest proof, we haven't felt it in person yet, but uh, it looks way better. So, um, you know, I, I'm very finicky because I treat every product like this is the one. Like, what if someone buys this and they think less of us for it? We gotta, gotta not do that. And so, you know, I said, maybe we need to upgrade the shirt, even though it's the same shirt we've always sold. Maybe we gotta, we gotta change something. We got, it's gotta be, I gotta be proud of it. And that's, that's the only way I can explain it to them. Of like, I'm telling you right now, we've done this in the past. There's been products that I'm not proud of and they don't sell that well. Um, but if I'm proud of it, we'll sell a ton because I, I believe it and I'll stand behind it till I, till I run out of money. Muscle sprouts. <laughs> pretty good i want to like brussels sprouts but uh i just haven't yet shout out to the fish room in albuquerque new mexico very knowledgeable owner who does things the right way i'm glad to see your products on their shelves yes we're up to almost 60 stores now that uh have our products and that's it's kind of a cool thing you know it's uh i'm glad that People are enjoying it. Store owners are enjoying it and things like that. It's We're still running into the weird thing where like customers will, will talk us up a bunch. And then they'll apply. But then we're like, so do you want to order? And they're like, um, ah. the, you know, like they're not even convinced. They don't even know what we do yet, really. And so it's like this, maybe you shouldn't order from us. Like you, you apply and your store is, is good. But I mean... I, I tell people when I come here, like, we're not going to go try to convince people to carry our stuff. Like, you either know of a Corian Co-op and want to do and partake in what we're doing, or you don't. If you just, like, if it's just a profit margin or something for you, that's never going to be the right fit for that customer. So. YouTube shorts are not my thing. I like to learn something that takes more than 30 seconds to show. Yeah, I mean, that I, I watched one today where someone was educating in 30 seconds, and all it left me with... It was about a fish topic, so I knew about it already. But I'm like, you didn't explain it. Like, you just said, this is a thing. It's like saying fish can't live without the nitrogen cycle. And then, like, that's it. You can't explain the nitrogen cycle in any meaningful way in under 30 seconds or under a minute. You can explain it in a minute. You can say, hey, there's one bacteria that processes from ammonia to nitrite, and there's another bacteria that processes from nitrite to nitrate. And that is the nitrogen cycle. If you don't have that, you have ammonia buildup, it leads to gill burn, your fish will die. Uh, now you know. There you go, right? Like that doesn't actually teach someone like, well, now I know the chemistry of an aquarium and I understand the relationship and I understand, you know, how ammonia, if it was lower than pH 6.5, would actually be non-toxic. I understand that, you know, you need to oxygenate and continually feed bacteria to keep it alive and that there's you know, multiple strains of bacteria and that you have to have a place for them to live and you have to do things that are going to kill the bacteria. And yeah, I just, I don't know. I, and so I guess I'm leaning more towards maybe, you know, maybe I'm going to go down the other rabbit hole and be like, I only do hour long videos and I'll be the, the, the anti short creator back. Like I was in the day, everybody was doing quick videos. I did super long videos. Hmm. I'm running two 200 watt heaters and 140 gallon, so a little underrated, but I did that purposely after watching your video on heaters. Uh, it has a net style lid and we turn on the AC in the tank and it drops by three inches. Yeah. Is it salt water? Is that why you're running the net style lid? Otherwise I would just get a real lid on that thing and go down to like one 100 watt and call it a day. All the shorts are really forgettable. I can watch a bunch and never remember that what I was doing. Yeah, I've I've been I, so I filmed a real weird video that you guys are gonna hate. Uh, it'll come out some at some point. You'll know it's that video because I talk about the comfort crisis in it. Um, and I, I'm talking about I'm gonna call it the human brain or something. And the the gist of it is something like uh, social media. Let's just let's let's say YouTube Shorts now, right? Because that's what we're talking about. The fact that I can basically I could have shown you what I did in my video on Wednesday or Thursday, whatever day we released it. Uh, I could have shown you the results of the Crypt Garden Tank and the Cool Shrimp in under a minute, and you can basically every thirty seconds you're just going, "Ooh, that's neat. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's neat. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's not neat. So, go to the next one. Oh, that's neat. Nope." 
Nope. Oh, that's neat. Hmm. 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 Pretty soon it's been three hours, right? And I think this is actually contributing a lot to our um, our hobby's detriment for us personally. So because we can see rewards very quickly if we choose to, and a lot of us do, we then are less likely to get enough enjoyment out of something that takes longer. So um, setting up our own aquarium, right? Or going to clean your aquarium and... Um, you know, shoot that video. It takes me like eight hours between planning and buying supplies and doing all of that. And so, and it is enjoyable. At the end, I'm like, ooh, that was enjoyable. But it wasn't more enjoyable than if I had watched really cool aquariums and, and TV shows on it or shorts or whatever about it. <coughs> I know I can get more dopamine hits and more pleasure from that. And so I think it's partly, partly is detoxifying from it. And so I feel like it's part of my goal to help you guys detox from it, whether you know it or not. And that is, yeah, you sat here for two hours on a live stream. That is the opposite of shorts, right? You don't know if the next five minutes will be terribly boring or hilarious or anything. You have to kind of wait through it to get it. It's not just instantly the minute you're it's not uh, hitting and firing right for you, you skip right um and so i i think that yeah i made a video and i talked about that and i think that's why we're seeing more and more burnout in the hobby and uh you know things have never been better in the hobby products are better foods are better everything's more accessible all of these things and yet we see people that aren't as happy seemingly at least from the outside looking in we it seems like um they're the, at least that's what i'm observing i feel like people are a little less you know i don't know if it if it started i i think it kind of started in my opinion when kind of a mono and high-end aquascaping kind of uh got a little bit more popular in the hobby and we it wasn't so much that it was tiktok but it was you go on forums and just get like, wow, that's an amazing aquarium. I see the picture, right? And you could you could find these these threads of just like picture after picture, show your tank. That's why those threads do really well on forums is you can kind of, oh, that one's dumb. I would never do that. Nope. Ooh, that's amazing. That's an idea. That's an idea. That's an idea. And, uh, you know, it didn't really exist before that. You know, it, it, it kind of always has, but... I actually, the more I think about it, and I, you know, so Katie and I went and saw uh, a double feature movie yesterday at the movie theater, and we saw Creature from the Black Lagoon, and the second one was Phantom of the Opera. I had never seen either of them, nor had she, and uh, we had a really, really good time because we were disconnected from social media. We had to drive there. It was a 40-minute to get, 40-minute drive to get there. We watched the two movies. Um, then we grabbed dinner and went and had dinner with my grandma, right? Good day. And, but the dopamine hits or the, 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 the pleasure from those is much reduced compared to what you can accomplish in my own room right here. I can, I can do business. I can watch videos. I can, you know, search for the perfect topic and always be fed with exactly what I want to see. And what, what's different and what was refreshing was that my bra my brain was relaxing while watching the the movie so the story would go along but it's not like movies today where it's shaky camera fast action got to keep move keep the story moving uh so that your brain is catching up and and staying stimulated instead it was watching a story unfold over the course of 90 minutes and it let you have time for your mind to wander it let you leave it refreshed and not with anxiety or anything like that and so um I believe we used to have some of that built into our everyday life and we don't anymore. And, you know, it's something I've been thinking about is, you know, I, I talked about it in the video too, of like the fact that Uber Eats exists. It's, yeah, it costs money and there's things like that, but it also takes the opportunity from you stopping at your local fish store. You know, it's, oh, well, for five bucks, I could have that food or I can go there and I can get it. It's five bucks cheaper. It's not the money. I used to think it was about the money, and I've realized it's actually about the interaction. You don't have the chance to see nature out the window while you're driving. You don't have the chance to stop in your fish store because it's next to that taco place anyway. You don't have all these little opportunities, and that's actually what's missing. 
um, I think, from our lives that, that cause us to not get the same enjoyment. Because an aquarium, from start to finish, like the point where you might enjoy it versus where you start is much, much longer than most activities we're doing in our daily lives. So knowing that that's the case, we're seeing more and more people get frustrated and they're getting frustrated faster. I bought the things and my tank doesn't look amazing. It's been set up for 17 minutes now. I better email support and go, why isn't this doing what it's supposed to do? And uh, yeah, so I, I think it's part of my my job. Well, that's not true. It's not part of my job. It's what I would like to do. Uh, knowing that if I think I want to see the hobby continue to thrive, I need to help like steer people towards um, hopefully activities and ways of thinking where they will be able to enjoy their aquariums. And it's not that you couldn't watch shorts all day on a Saturday. And, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's no different than gaming all day. Like you might play for, you know, if I play Counter-Strike all day, lots of dopamine hits, I'm on edge, all of that. But uh, there's a healthy balance to everything. And so uh, I think that we need to start realizing, and the best way I thought about it in my mind was we started out hating commercials on um, on TV. Most of us did, or they're my age, I guess. And now that they're gone, I realized they served a purpose. And part of it was sitting through commercials was not great most times. But when the show came back on that you were enjoying, it made that better. Right. And so I think it did serve a purpose that we weren't we didn't know until we it was gone. Right. And now with Netflix and now with YouTube, like we're now at a point where a lot of us. Are really put off the minute we're served an ad. Right. So think about that. Like. I know. So I pay for YouTube premium, but. I know that if I go to click in on somebody's video, I'm like, yeah, and it, it, it's not something where I'm like, ooh, I've been waiting weeks for this. Like, let's just say it's, hey, I'm checking up on this creator and I click in. If it served me with a non skippable minute and a half ad, I'm like, nope, I'm out. I'll watch something else. And that's the point we are where even like a 30 second ad, most people, well, not most, a lot of people won't sit through it. They'll just click out the video and they'll do those things, right? And so then I start thinking, well, what's the value of this? If I create something and most people, um, you know, most people aren't willing to invest 30 seconds to consume what I've created, then I haven't created something very good. And so I think, you know, if I create a product, we know that, oh, you guys are willing to pay $7 for this, right? It has a value. But when it comes to content, there are definitely members who will pay $5 to watch it. Um, but then there's just the, the majority of people who get to consume for free. And we can see that they just don't really want to watch commercials. And I get it. I don't really want to watch the commercial either. But I, I do think there's a line of logic that says um, experiencing the down times and the not great parts makes the good parts better. And so... Um, so I'm trying to find ways that I could build that into my life that makes sense for me, right? And that might be driving 40 minutes to go to the movie theater. And I, I actually think that, um, movie theaters are going to be a thing of the past. I, I think there's a good chance that 20 years from now, young people, I've never been to a movie theater and like we were there in the ghost town Saturday afternoon. It cost us $18 a ticket. So that wasn't great. Well, I say it's not great. Like we, we could afford it. It was fine. But um, I think it's more expensive than people want to pay. Because when you look at the value proposition, I can pay $36 to watch this movie with my wife. Popcorn's $10, right? There's, there's things you need to invest in if you want to. Or I can buy this thing for $18 on Amazon or Netflix 
we can watch it just like everybody else can basically and then uh, you can order Uber Eats and have good food delivered to your home and still save money compared to going there. But what the difference is, so whether you watch a movie in your home with Uber Eats or you go and you spend it at the movie theater, more expensive tickets, more expensive food, really the difference is going to be the time it took to get there and come back. That's what's now missing. You still got the movie experience um like as in you consume the movie you didn't have a chance to run into your friend at the movie theater which maybe you just call him and invite him over to your house but that's i think what's missing and i think we're in a world now where it makes sense to just you know what i'd rather order my favorite thai food or indian food or mexican food or whatever it is and sit on the couch with my family and watch the video without distractions from other people that is going to win i think the movie theater is going to go away and i think we're going to be sitting here um an amount of years from now going oh this was yep we needed that social interaction we needed to leave the house there was something about getting ready leaving the house driving somewhere and because of oh the movie was 40 minutes away i'm more likely to stop at this fish store or whatever and so, um, yeah, I, I, I do think that theaters, just like drive-ins, which most drive-ins are gone now, but I think they're going to be a thing of the past. And so, you know, we'll see. We'll see if I'm right in a few years. I just, I can't see, unless people change their line of thinking, you know, I think it's closer to like a farmer's market and stuff. You have to make a dedicated effort to go shop in the, the wind and the rain sometimes. And usually it's kind of more expensive, but you get the experience of a farmer's market as opposed to having your groceries delivered, right? You can have that done now. And so until people change the mindset and start putting uh, value into the lull parts of life, we're going to lose a lot of them, I think. And it makes sense. I mean, it just, we, we, we continually innovate our culture to do that and yeah we'll all be wally basically of just like we sit in a floating chair and everything's served to us not the worst way to live but also i think there's there's things we will miss out on one thing i miss about remote work that's that's an exactly another you know i do think about that of like i've set my life up where i don't have to leave my house i can go a week never leave we just you know my wife will go shopping but I'm self-sufficient here. I can go to the studio and film. I can do my work. I can do all of that. And I know my life is different compared to when I drove to the store every day, right? Because I was working in the store. So I, I do, I think people, more people are experiencing that now. And maybe I'm just five years past that. And in five years, people are going to go, oh, I understand what Corey's talking about. Because I've now worked at home for five years and my social circle has shrank my place I'm willing to go to has shrank and I'm not doing as much as I did. I used to be this person that would have this radius and uh, yeah. Murphy says, I went to the cinema last night, five people in there. I think our theater to play the double feature we had two, four, six, uh, 10, I think it was 13. We had 13 people. It was from like one o'clock till 4.30 and uh I think I saw one other person in the movie theater. Like I went out to go to the restroom during the intermission. It was a ghost town. And uh, yeah, I just don't see how that's sustainable long-term for companies like that. And so I actually think I have, um, you know, an idea for them, but it's a different model. Why wouldn't I drive 10 more minutes to sit in huge seats? Yeah, we... You know, we, we do like that when they have nice recliner seats and they are bigger and everything. Um, but I, I think the they need to embrace bring your own snacks. They need to embrace bring in your sodas, bring in your candy bars and your chips and your stuff. We'll still sell stuff at a, a, a decent rate. Charge us for the... the uh, the movie and the experience, right? So make every ticket $20 and double down on, hey, invite your friends, make it more like a 
I want to call it like a potluck. Like, oh, you made Chex Mix, you made cookies, you brought some sodas, and be the adve- you know the event space, and less of the yeah you're gonna go here, but if you bring your family, by the time they bought a Slurpee and popcorn and the tickets, and each one gets a, a candy, you're 127 dollars into it for a family. Like, I think you're you're better off centering it around uh, more of more of that. My local cinema is great, but they have an app to order drinks and snacks to your seat so you can slob out even more. Yeah, we've got, I think it's called Cinnabar or something. And they'll be making dinner. I actually think that's, I think that's got a chance of making it because you basically go to dinner, you pay a bit more for dinner, and you buy, um, you know, the tickets. But that's more of that social interaction type where... You know, we we literally went and we had enough points on my wife's app, so we got a a, a soda, this giant, you know, twenty five gallon barrel of soda, for a dollar. And then we were like, should we get popcorn? I was like, nah, I had lunch, I don't need popcorn. And she's like, ah, maybe I'll get some. We're like, well, how much for popcorn? And the big one's ten dollars. And then we go, well, we don't we don't we don't need a large. Like, what's a what's a medium? Nine dollars. It literally is one dollar less, and a small was eight. And it's like. And it, it had tipped the scale in our minds of like, yeah, maybe we wanted some pop. If we had heard the right number, we were like, yeah, sure. We we all know the popcorn is dang near free. Had it been five, maybe we would have said yes. Maybe even six. I don't know. I don't know where we would have exactly said yes. But it was so off-putting to be like, because the bag for a medium was like, you know, like $9. What? Like, I you know, and, and it's, we paid $18 for the tickets for a matinee ticket. So we, we put value in the movie, but when you know the value of something else, you know, if this Diet Coke, if they go, have you ever been at a restaurant or a farmer's market? And like, yeah, that Diet Coke, yeah, three fifty. dollars And you're just like, what? That's one can of Diet Coke. You know, if we're to say a buck, you're like, all right, yeah, a buck, sure. You know, maybe even a buck fifty. But when you get past that, like, ooh, that's just, that's like offensive. You just don't do it, so... Honestly, though, massive TVs are so inexpensive now. You can have a great viewing experience at home. I agree, and, and I do. But I, 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 the pushback I'm trying to give people is, uh, as I'm learning, I think there is something to getting out of the house, going to a physical location, and changing your environment. I think there's something there that I don't get. Because I could, don't get me wrong, I could have the world's best theater in my home, but I'm still not leaving my home. So, yeah, imagine you get free popcorn. I thought about that, too. So I don't understand. Like, they got all these signs all up in this Regal Theater, and it's like, you can get unlimited movies for $21.99 a month. And I'm like, and we just saw one movie. It's eight ninety nine. So clearly they want a subscription model. I understand that. But I'm like, food and stuff still $10 billion. Well, if you have the subscription, it's 10% less, right? So the $10 thing of popcorn is $9. And I have been to... Movie theaters, like in, in, I think, Shoreline or Seattle, there's the Crest where it's $2 to get in, and then their nachos or popcorn and stuff. Still kind of, it's not super expensive, but it's like middle of the road. And you kind of know, like, yeah, tickets are cheap, so I'll buy some food to help support them. That works. I've been, you know, some Hawaiian theaters where it was cheap, and, and the food was, or it wasn't cheap, but the food was cheap. And I, I like that too. And I, I think that's where it's going to it's gonna get to that. It's going to get to, I think theaters are going to go through the pain that retail went through. And that is, if Amazon's going to sell this Diet Coke for 72 cents, you can't sell it for $9. And I think that's the struggle they're going to feel. Like Netflix, Amazon, all these streaming services. And the fact, it used to be that, well, you got to wait a year before you can rent that thing on DVD. Now, it might release the same day or only like three days later. Everyone goes like, well, I'll just wait three days and watch it on my in my house. Like you can do that if you really are jazzed to see a movie. And so I think if they don't create a better in-person experience that is with people based around, I really think there's something about encourage bringing the food and the drinks and charge the ticket, but get people, you know, that want to spend time it's a ritual make it ritualistic that's how you win at a cinema and i was also talking to katie that i think where we're going to see the cinemas go away is the gap 
that COVID created. So let's say for two, two and a half years, people that are 13 to 15 and a half, maybe in that zone, never went to a movie theater. They're now going to be missing. They're, they're not, they're not uh, you know, onboarded to know that like, oh, from 16 to 19, you, you go on a date at the theater. And that's where they're going to see the Friday night, the Saturday night, all of those uh, revenues go down. And I think without that, the cinemas are really going to struggle. And so they need to reinvent themselves and figure out how are we going to get families and people back in here after breaking the cycle for two and a half years. Went to a movie up here in Skagit County for the first time in years. The theater was a trash heap. Did not make me want to go back. Again, focusing on that in-person experience. I I agree. If you can sit in your living room and watch it, you know, I think our TV is probably like 70-some inches, and you have any reasonable speakers, and you have what you want to drink in the fridge, and you can make dinner, you have to compete with that experience. And I think you have to do something better, and I'm hoping that's going to be Friends. Tried to only sell Top Gun Maverick online for a few months. Eventually it moved to be able to rent it. Uh, I only wanted to rent it. Yeah, I, I think there's going to be some some testing and some transitions and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but eventually the public wins over time and that's the money will go where it needs to go. All the former theater employees are all saying how ticket sales don't make the theaters money. My old manager said it 24-7. Probably true. But there's there's these things that just are truths, right? Let's say a $20... Let, let's say per person that walks to the door, it costs $20 in maintenance. You got to maintenance the popcorn machine, the lights, the seats, the cleaning, all of that, right? Now... That same thing happens at a sports stadium, right? Same thing happens at other places like that. Now, you could say, like, well, we don't make any money off the tickets because it costs $20. Sure, I get it. So you got to sell popcorn to make money. You could also sell a ton of popcorn and no tickets to make money. Like, there's always overhead, and I get that. Um, but if there's no money coming in, the, the, the theaters just go away. And now the uh, the budget for a movie might have to go down. Or maybe there's less profits, right? Like, I can't imagine the budget for Avatar 2, which is, you know, some ungodly number of money, right? And yet, I was at the theater watching uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. The budget on that fractional of a percent comparatively right and so i i don't think movie theaters are necessarily focusing or not movie theaters movie companies production companies are focusing on are we getting good bang for our buck instead they're trying to make the biggest most viral video but what if what if they could make cheaper movies that were well i mean ugh. Proof and concept. You guys are watching me in a live stream right now for free. So you'll spend time. You've spent two hours and whatever, two hours and 28 minutes, right? Watching a live stream for free. So we know maybe you don't need to spend $7 billion making Avatar 2. Maybe you could have spent $100,000 and made something like, well, that's, that's worse than Avatar 1. Like, yeah, but maybe it was free or maybe it was watch a commercial before and after. Like, there's going to be these other models that pop up. And uh, I don't necessarily think it's bigger budgets we need. I think it's probably, well, how do we make this so people want to be there, right? And we see these things of TwitchCon, Magic the Gathering Con, PAX. You know, the, the content, the production levels, not in the crazy amounts of money, but people still want to go there for the event. And I think that's where we're going to see... Um, you know, we're going to see some movement down the road. We used to go to Seattle for the movies, not going there anymore. I used to go to Rocky Horror at midnight when I was a kid. I've done that a couple of times. Theaters, uh, should be, wait, should do a binge watch deal on the weekend and Friday night classics. So I completely agree. They're, they're starting that mile or that, that, uh, 
that mindset, right? You can buy the subscription pass for an entire month for $22. But I completely agree the model needs to change so that it's more like you go, well, back in the day, if you guys remember, you go back to a blockbuster and you're like, what do I want to watch? And then you just watch that. Like, what if there was a voting system? You sit down in a theater and you saw in the theater, okay, it's these 10 movies that could play, right? And there's a little thing on your chair or something that you vote for what movie's next. And then you go, oh, crap, it's Phantom of the Opera. I didn't really want that one. Like, all right, well, I'll watch it anyway. And then you vote again and like, hey, now it's, you know, now it's Ferris Bueller's Day Off, right? Meanwhile, you paid the 30 bucks to get in. Let's say it's 30 bucks for all of Saturday or something. And all your friends brought cookies and snacks and drinks and all of that. And, you know, if you, oh, man, it's, I don't want to watch this movie. Maybe there's a, a thing in the, the center where you can just go hang out and talk. And you're like, all right, yeah, we'll get a, a notification when the next movie starts. And we'll go watch that. Like, they just need to rethink of how this needs to happen. That's, yeah, because right now there is, in my opinion, losing horribly to... Eh, I could just sit on my couch and have Uber Eats deliver, and oh, I just paid ten bucks less. Sounds great, Corey. I like that you seem to have taken uh, enjoy your fish to a higher level of enjoy your life. Well, I, I believe to enjoy your hobbies, you have to be enjoying life, and I think uh, you know to truly enjoy fish keeping, you have to get some pleasure out of cleaning the tanks and. And doing the things. Otherwise you just quit. And um, I'm hoping that we'll, we'll evolve as a society I think. And learn that downtime is a good thing. Not 100% stimulation all the time. Always rewards. Never the, the journey. And uh, yeah. Well, partially the reason is there's nothing to see right now because of the COVID gap. The selection really isn't that great right now. I 100% agree that that would make sense for new movies, right? But why aren't we seeing like, uh, you know, let's, let's imagine I own a movie theater, which I don't. And let's imagine that I have access to everything to be able to watch, which I don't. And theaters don't either. I don't know exactly... You know, how much did they have to pay royalties to show Phantom of the Opera and Creature from the Black Lagoon? But let's pretend that there was the repository of, like, Netflix. And all let's, let's imagine all the streaming services could be done in a theater. Let's imagine that that was legally allowed to happen, right? Why not be like, okay, so nothing good out right now? Let's do Friends Week. Okay, from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. For the next two weeks, we're going to run Friends the TV show nonstop. Seven days a week. You can come in, watch, hang out with your friends. And then in the other screen, we're going to offer uh, Shawshank Redemption. We're going to offer Star Wars movies. We're going to offer all these classics that people are willing to re-watch. Because... I gotta be honest. I'm willing to go spend 18 bucks to re-watch something, or maybe watch something I never got to watch in the theater more likely than I am to go watch Fast and the Furious 22, right? Like, there, there are definitely movies where I'm like, ooh, I would love to see that. I never got to see that. I was, like, I would, so here, I can think of movies off the top of my head right now. I never got to see Flight of the Navigator in the theater. Um... I don't think, well, I did see that later in life. One time we went and saw uh, Labyrinth in the theater. Not when it was new, obviously. Uh, what's the other one where you're, the, the kid's riding like the, the big, is it Falcor? The, the big dog flying thing? I would pay to go see that, right? There's a lot of movies I would pay money to go watch. And they're just not surfacing. So it doesn't, you know, yeah, there's always problems in business. Hey, COVID made it so this thing can't happen. Great. And now it would now it's my job to figure it out, right? The license to play friends for a week would be in the millions. Sure. Because someone's willing to pay it. The whole world only exists because people are willing to pay money. 
if everyone, if no one would ever pay more than 22 cents for the whole franchise of Friends, guess what the price would be? 22 cents, right? So major shifts take years, but, you know, yeah, I'd go see The Princess Bride again. I've seen it in the theater. It's a good time, right? I'd go see Tombstone in the theater. I've never seen that, but maybe I would, right? Netflix paid $500 million to run Seinfeld for six months. Yeah. Because someone was willing to pay it. Now, Friends, great. Choose a different series. How about Rugrats? How about Ren and Stimpy? How about Tailspin the Cartoon? How about Smurfs? How about... I'm trying to think of maybe some things that, like, never got crazy stupid popular in the franchise worth $7 billion. You know? I think of something that's like, yeah, it was halfway decent. Well, let's do that. There's tons of stuff that I think could be that way. Never Ending Story was that movie I was talking about. Yeah. Haven't seen Spaceballs in theater. I didn't see Goonies either. Um, yeah, I, I think Beavis and Butt. Yeah, I think there's probably a lot of things that exist. And yes, maybe Friends was a bad example. But I do believe that everything levels off. If nobody's willing to buy access to Friends... After three years, guess what? It's $100 million. Oh, so no one's still willing to? Guess what? It's $50 million. Oh, guess what? Pretty soon, it's in our theaters. Yeah, I, the old Smurf cartoons, I'd pay to see those in theater. Exactly. There are things. If people, you know, spent the time, your life, your livelihood, your whole family, your franchise depends on how do we get people to sit in the theater and watch this? We have to show them something they can't already easily consume. And we have to do it in a better way. Yeah, I'm just saying it's already broken. Yes, for sure, cinemas and studios are a broken model. In my opinion, this is probably very similar to what the music industry went through over the last 20 years. Now, the money is made in ads from streaming and in-person concerts. That's why it costs $1,000 to go see Blink-182 in 2022, right? Uh, and what we're going to see probably is, you know, what is it? what does it take to... Imagine theaters got bigger or different. You know, imagine this idea I just thought of. What if it was a movie and some of the actors showed up? So before the movie starts, you can get a picture with them, a signed autograph. You shake their hand and go, I really loved you in this movie. And they go, thank you so much. They go down, you know, and so the movie starts. They're done. They go down to the next screen, and they have another showing starting an hour and a half later. Guess what? They do it again. And for that experience, maybe you're paying 50 or or 100 bucks per. Like, it's just a different model that is not being analyzed. Instead, they're going to watch it basically be run to the ground going, well, we're only willing to pay people $12 an hour, and people don't want to be here, and the service is going to keep going down. They'll keep getting dirtier. We'll, less and less will happen until it just gets shut down. Yeah, family night with the kiddos. Yeah, they used to, I mean, for a long time, at least before COVID, they would do morning shows where it was cartoons and all that stuff earlier in the day. There there are a million ideas. One of the ideas I do love is the fact that you can rent a theater for a hundred bucks. During COVID, they allowed that. And I think there's something there. It just, there's too much to, like, renting it for a hundred bucks and then, like, inviting your friends to buy $10 popcorn is not that big of a lure. But if you offered me for 350 bucks, right, for 350 bucks, we'll provide popcorn, cookies, drinks, and three pizzas. You know, like, you put a package together, I'm like, wow, I can invite people. That sounds great. Let's do that. It's like renting the bowling alley for a birthday party, like... I think the problem is right now, Regal and, and whoever else is just giant corporations. They can't change it all yet. They're paying, probably paying too much for movies. I, I have no idea what they pay. But uh, yeah, it, I, I, I just think that it will go away if they don't find a way to radically change it. And uh, I think the things that people are going to grow to miss will be the in-person interactions. I think that's what we're going to miss because everything's getting so good to stay at home. You can have your food delivered. You can have your entertainment delivered. You can 
you know, virtually anything. You, there's almost no reason to leave your home. So create an experience that's worth leaving your home. That's how you're going to win, right? When you go to my fish store, you get to buy fish. It only works because it's more of a pain to ship fish. You also get to talk to employees. You also get to meet other fish nerds. You also get to feed Murphy. Like we continue to think of what can we do to give more reasons to actually come here. <laughs> then you could sell them Tums afterwards. Yeah, why not, right? Movie theaters will probably become birthday and other parties. Yeah, why not? A lot of broken models in today's society. Car lots, theaters, cable television, internet, insurance is broken. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of different stuff that can change. You know, there's a lot of malls around me that are just becoming ghost towns. They also have theaters in them. Like, you have to start thinking, like, why would someone want to come here? Like, oh, I could shop. I can do that for my phone. Oh, I could watch a movie. Oh, I could do that for my phone. I could eat. Uber Eats will deliver that to me. So you really got to think of, like, how can we put a package together that really makes some sense? Really good food, plus a movie, plus cool stuff to look at and shop. Like, when that went away, that's where we... You know, part of the problem, I think, is malls never kept up with the internet. And so what would fly in a mall of, like, oh, look, there's a store that sells whirly gigs or garden art that is the cheapest crap money can buy, but it's $29 and says world's best grandma on it, right? That just died out because the internet existed and then people were like, oh, I could literally just buy it on Amazon. I can have to say whatever I want. I don't even have to pick between world's best grandma, world's best mom, uh, world's best stepdad, world's best dad. You know, you don't even have to like hope they have the one anymore. It just is. And so as those stores died out, Nothing replaced them, and now it's half a ghost town. And so I think, uh, you know, the, the the malls that make it, they have a decent food center with good independent-type food, not just McDonald's and stuff. They have a theater. They have an arcade. Like, there's still something to going to a physical arcade. The sounds, the, the lights, as opposed to only gaming in your own office. So there's still time, still chances. Uh, need an extreme virobite like food made with krill. It's already been produced. I don't like it. I literally have it in my fish room right now. It's, it's a little bit too hard. It sinks a little bit too fast. And, uh, as you guys know, if I don't like it, I, I, I can't sell it yet. So maybe we work on it some more. Maybe we don't. Um, but yeah, it, it, we, you know, you, you gotta remember 18 hours a day. I live inside the fish world. A lot of ideas uh, enter my brain, and then we start on them, and then we go, oh, maybe that doesn't make sense. Maybe it does. Maybe we break through. Maybe we don't. I thought about buying a bed straight off the internet. I decided against it because it would be good to try them out for a few minutes before I chose one. I've done both, and uh, I prefer the bed I bought online. You know, so I, in my opinion, beds are losing their ground in the physical stores, like going to a mattress depot or going to a whatever and then wondering like how much am I going to have to bargain versus like oh guess what Casper mattress is willing to give me a discount code 100 days free to try it and lose a hundred dollars to sell me a mattress like uh you know I think there's they gotta they gotta get better I don't know how Actually, I do. Here's my model. Here's my model because I've done this. I've done this before too. Uh, create a hotel. And depending on the floor you stay on, it's a different bed type. Right? And then when you go, ooh, I think I like this bed in the, in the bottom area, you go, ooh, this might be the one. Then you rent the hotel room or you know that like, ooh, when I go on vacation, I'm going to stay on floor six because it has the medium firm Sarah mattresses. And you go do that and you go, oh, I slept so good. Or the first night you go, oh my gosh, I didn't sleep a wink. And they go, oh, I'm sorry. Would you like to try a bed on floor eight? That's not as firm. And by the time you're done on vacation, you know 
that's the one and you buy it. I've done that before because I stayed at uh, at a hotel somewhere and I fell in love with the bed and I bought it. It was expensive and it was the same beds. I wasn't staying at the Bellagio, but it was the same bed they had in the Bellagio in Vegas. Turned out after like a year, I didn't really like that bed. But, you know, there there's always ways to, um, you know, potentially change a model. Just because we're not doing it doesn't mean it couldn't work. And I'm sure there's reasons why there'd be some problems there. But, um, you know, right now, if I, you know, to me, if I've got 30 minutes or an hour to lay on a bed in a in the mattress depot while people just like stare at you like, can I answer any more questions, sir? Or I could buy one online and have 100 days to return it, no questions asked. Like, it's a hard thing. I won't do any haggling business. Wait, I won't. Yeah, I won't do any haggling business anymore. No in-person sale for cars, mattresses, furniture. I just want to know how much it costs when I buy it. I 100% agree. I told my wife, I'm like, next time we buy a car, I kind of just want to order online. I just, I don't even like the experience. Last time I bought a car, I told them, I'm like, I'll be honest, I'm going to test drive a car. If I like it, I'm buying it today. And I know all the, I, I know all the options I already want. And you can't convince me for any of your warranties. I, I promise you, there is zero chance. And it still took four hours of them begging me to buy warranties and other crap that I wouldn't buy. It was a horrible experience. Where if I could just buy that online, click the buttons, after I do any kind of a test drive, that's what I would like to do. Um, so yeah, that's I can see how it's alluring. Yeah. There's something to owning a physical copy of something rather than having to download something over a network that doesn't work sometimes. Yeah, we watched a movie last night and Amazon kept lagging. It was super annoying. Yeah, it's, I, I think we're just at a point where online has gotten so good and online typically has taken out all the customer service part. And if you can't apply customer service and do better than an online sale, you're just going to go out of business. That's, what I, you know, like, so in my mind, hopefully you get a good experience buying from us online. If you have a problem or something like that, you'll reach out to Candy and she'll help you or some other people. And then my hope is that when you go to our physical store, it's a better experience than shopping online. We have the same plants. We have the same stuff. We also have fish. There's no shipping. You know, that that's the goal. If you can't do it as well as you can do it online, don't have a physical space anymore. Yeah, customer service doesn't exist in stores anymore. That's kind of true because... Um, there's not enough people going to stores. So then you don't get enough money coming in, which means you can't hire good enough people, which means you don't want to go to the store because they don't have good helpers anymore. So it's like this like cycle that's going to be hard to break. I still prefer shopping at a store, like to see, touch, and try things on. Yeah. I would love that if people carried a 3XL shirt. I could probably go to 15 different places and no one will have one. And so a guy like me just goes, yeah, I'm just going to buy them online. And then I go to a, a sneaker store, right? Oh, well, we don't have that color in that size. And we don't have this one. We don't have that one. You can get the uh, the the milky brown and mint green shoes that you don't want. And then I go, uh, looks like here I could have them tomorrow in the color I want and the size I want for $12 less. I'm going to just do that. And so that's part of where we're losing, you know, and that's, I know that that's why I, I focus so much on having stuff on in stock. It's the biggest deal breaker. You could show me the world's best thing in person. And then I go, great, I'll take one. And then they go, we don't have this one, but we have the one that you don't want. And then I instantly just buy it online tomorrow. Like you, you spend all that time and energy to sell me on something you don't even have. Um, so yeah, I, I wish, you know, sneaker stores, we can order that online for you. And it'll be here in five weeks. Yes. So many times. And I'm like, yeah, but I have a, I gotta be at Aquashella next week and I can order it. What blows my mind Here's what blows my mind. You could be at the store and you're like, let's say you're at the Skechers store or whatever Adidas doesn't matter. 
and they don't have your size. It'll be here in five weeks. You're like, I can order it from your website and it will be here in four days from your company. How can it take longer to get to the store than it's going to be to get to my house? You're not helping me. And what I, I feel bad because then they don't even like get the commission or anything. It's like, but I need, I, I literally need it. It's not that I'm, I'm a patient person. I would wait. If it didn't matter, I'll wait. But I literally need it eight days from now. I'll be using it. Can't be five weeks. My father was an army recruiter for 13 years. He would just leave when a car dealer tried to pressure him into anything. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I'm just not that confident or I just know that like I just want it to be done. And I don't know how else to tell them like I cuz I literally tell them I I say there's zero chance at all. And I and I and I say and let me stop you. I said all your bacon. I basically go, "Let me stop you. I realize you think that's what everyone says." And then we convert them and I go, and I know you think you're going to do that to me, but I'm literally telling you there is zero chance. Not, oh, maybe zero. Like, even if you say it's free, I'm going to be so skeptical, skeptical that it's still a no from me. So just know that it's zero. And then they still put you like, well, now you got to talk to this person. Now you got to talk to this person. Now you got to talk to this person. You got to sign this piece of paper and you got to talk to this person. It's infuriating. And so then they'll, They'll force me and uh, Mr. Ed's electronics to just go buy online and then go, why aren't people coming in? Yeah, you tortured me last time I was there. That's why. Tortured me. My family owns a home decorating business and we can't compete with Maynard's. Uh, except Maynard's employees don't know the difference between paints. Yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah, I I love it when I find a independent business that is knowledgeable about their product and keeps it in stock. Unfortunately, that's very rare. As in, I find lots of knowledge and they'd be like, well, turns out we don't have that. Or, oh, you know, I can paint. Like, well, we have four gallons. I need 22. Yeah. I've got it in satin. Yeah, but I want an eggshell. It was already $3 more per can. I can just go to your competitor, save $3, and they have it today. No, I don't want to. I got my Hoka shoes yesterday. They're amazing. I do love them. I do like them. Vivo Barefoot, best shoes forever. Don't know, never wore those. I've worn a lot of different shoes, and Hoka's are my favorite so far. I'm, I'm I'm this close to liquidating all my other shoes. We're going to donate them to shelters and stuff just because they, they feel so good on my feet. No foot pain at all. Car salespeople don't know about their vehicles anymore. I want Model X with feature Y. Which trim level do I need? Yeah. I, I run to that too. They're like, oh, well, we have one with these features. I'm like, yeah, I don't want those features. When I bought my last car, I was like, yeah, I don't want that, though. I literally am willing to pay this price for this feature set. Yeah, but we don't have one with that feature set. And I go, looks like I'm not buying one then. Well, well, maybe something we could do. Like, maybe there is. I'm telling you, I'm not paying for a roof rack. I don't want the roof rack. And I don't want the mud flaps either. And they're like, well, you, well, well, can't you, can't you make, and it's also not the color I want. Like, you need to be cutting me a deal as opposed to, Trying to think I want the thing you have that I don't want. And meanwhile, like I already, do, I, I do all my research. So I'm like, by the way, the one 40 minutes away, it has it in stock. Just make the trade like what you're supposed to do. Oh, that's going to be work. Yep. Or I'm going to drive over there. Pick your choice. Problem is that people want excellent customer service from experienced employees, but only willing to pay Walmart prices. You can't have both. I agree. Most people, most people I think are probably that way. I don't know if I'm a rare exception. In general, I will pay more for uh, mom and pop type stuff. I also am fortunate enough to be able to afford that. Um, I still hate tipping. I think I would, I would much rather my burger is $37 than it's $25 plus an insane amount of tip plus a fee plus a thing plus a thing. Like, 
I really want it. Just just let me know the price ahead of time. That's all I want. You should test them if you're having problems with your feet or back pain. Yeah, I used to. And then I found Hoka shoes and I don't anymore. So it's one of those things like those shoes probably are great. But it's for me, it's like uh, Ikex. This completely solved my problem. So I'm not going to try other stuff. The minute, to be fair, if somehow I'm like, ooh, at the nine month mark or something in my life changes and those shoes don't work for me, I'll try the, the Vivo thingies. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm rocking these ones because they were amazing. All right. Last time I bought a new car, I bought, I brought a trade in that was running on its last legs and I bought the advertised special. I forgot to check out the trade and could not move it as I drove away. <laughs> I, I, well, I don't I say I wish I could do that. I don't necessarily wish I don't want to pull one over on them, but yeah, that's their, that's their mistake for not doing that. I waited tables in college. I don't go out to eat if I can't afford to tip well. Yeah. The problem for me is I don't like feeling like a bad person. So I get caught in limbo. So at Aquashella, right? We sit down at the hotel for having breakfast the first day. It's a madhouse because there's Aquashella and a Stranger Things convention. And I got to get some breakfast in me. And so I'm like, all right, I would like the biscuits and gravy that also comes with deep fried chicken. I go, I don't want the deep fried chicken. I just want the biscuits and gravy. That's it. It takes an hour and 15 minutes to get the biscuits and gravy. Our drink sat empty. When it arrived, it was sausage gravy on English muffins. Keep in mind the day before I had the biscuits and gravy and it was biscuits and gravy, not English muffins. But they're so busy that there's no way, like I've got, it's like literally like 17 minutes till I have to be at the show for the VIP thing. I can't have them remake it. I just eat the world's worst biscuit and English muffin you could imagine. And then the bill is still like, I don't know, for what Zenzo had and I had, he had a coffee in the buffet. The buffet is $27. So he had a buffet and a coffee, so he's probably at 32. I think my thing was like 18 bucks. So we're at 50. And I still leave a $10 tip, even though less than 40 words were said between us and the people, and Zendo served himself. So like in that instance, I'm really just like, hmm, this, this is not the way, right? Like it just... And had I had the option of, like, they had bisque and gravy at the buffet, I just would have done that. But it's weird that you're still expected to tip for the buffet when you serve yourself. So there, there definitely are, you know, there are times when I'm like, I get it if you can't afford it. I also really hate that you're expected to tip even when things go horribly wrong. Not that you should, but you're expected to. That, that part I don't really like. And I, I really do love tipping well when someone has done an amazing job I, that makes me feel good i like it um i remember a time when me and my friends were out this 10 years ago we all went to a place that had like unlimited soup and it was really good and our total bill was like 20 some dollars we left a 50 dollar tip we were there for hours but then there's always the other side of that where it's like just terrible food terrible server and it might not be terrible. It might be way overworked. And there's all these things that could make a bad experience. And I realize, well, it's you know, if it's bad food, it's not the the server's fault. If it's there, there's all these things. But at the end, you we we can say all of these things why it's not someone's fault. But at the end of the day, you still if you still have a bad experience as a customer, you're less likely to go back. And it's maybe you feel like it's not worth the money and all of that. So. Tipping was a pain when I lived in San Francisco for a couple years. Had to use the calculator every time. Yeah, I just, I tip, I tip out of fear of looking like uh, I'm the bad guy, not out of you did a good job or, and 
I should preface this because I always forget. In Washington State, there is no such thing as being paid under minimum wage. So what, let me see what Washington State's minimum wage is. So even on the worst... Yeah, so starting next year, I don't want to dig too far, but starting next year, the minimum wage you could make in an hour is fifteen seventy four, plus all those tips. So the tips aren't making up like, oh, you were only going to make $2 an hour if you didn't get a tip. Yeah, and I, I definitely have had gamer buddies, like when I used to play Magic, I remember this one this one kid, I'll call him because he was like 18, and... Uh, and, and some others, like, because there was more than one waiter. One one waiter worked at, like, an Indian restaurant, and all the tips were stolen by the owners, so that was horrible. Another one worked, uh, on average, like, four hours a night when they did work, and they they had way more magic cards and stuff than I ever did, and I worked for Lincare. I was delivering oxygen. Don't You don't get tipped for that, apparently. And uh, so they would work, you know, much less than me, and they would make, you know, I was making $14 an hour working for Lincare, and uh, they were averaging 60 to $70 an hour, you know, and it was like, because they were already making minimum wage plus all of those tips and things. So can we tip candy? No, that's, that starts a, that starts a whole chain reaction. Cause then like we have the ability to turn on tipping at our cash register. We don't do that either. Um, I just, I really wish we could find a way to work like most of the world and just things cost a price. I really wanted to make the website include tax, but my accountant told me it's illegal to do that in Washington. I'm not allowed to. So, I because I love when you go to another country and you're like, this is 952, and then you like, you can just hand them 952 and walk out the door instead of, oh, it's 952 plus the tax. Yeah. Yeah, imagine living in a place like Europe where you pay a living wage and don't have to tip. Yeah, it's it's not some fantasy that could never happen. Like it's, it happens around the world. And again, this is one of those, it's going to take a long time um, before we're all on the same page in America. And our state minimum wage is different for restaurants. Yes, I'm aware. Um, that's why, you know, I specified in Washington State where I live because it makes a lot more sense than when people are living in another state where they're like, well, my person gets $2 an hour. I, I get that's a different thing. And so I just want to make sure it, it's not like, you know, I, I don't want anybody to not be paid fairly for the work they do. It's not about that. It's that I would much rather just know, great, biscuits, biscuits and gravy are $22, not 18 Great, that's easy. Just run the credit card. I don't have to think about it. And if you do an absolute amazing job, like another great example Another aqua shell. The aqua shell before I ate at the hotel every morning. Piss and gravy again, and people that were with me can attest to this. I ordered bis and gravy every morning. It was nineteen dollars per bis and gravy, which we already know bis and gravy are cheap. But hey, whatever, right? It's not about the price. It's about paying what it costs. And in the four days that I had bis and gravy, I had one piece of sausage this big every day I asked for extra gravy I only got extra gravy on the last day it was the same waiter each time it took four days and you might say well why didn't you ask for more gravy if you didn't get it no I did I did I go oh you forgot my extra gravy oh yep yeah, I'll be right back at a certain point you're like well it's been 32 minutes, everyone's done eating. I'm not going to be like, can I get more gravy again and eat it cold now? So, you know, there's something with me and Bits and Gravy, and uh, yeah, it's just unlucky, I guess. But even then, still tipping the guy. Like, I remember I tipped him $5 the first time that he really screwed it up. And then I tried to reward him, giving him 10 because, like, I think I tipped $5 for my Bits and Gravy, and then I tipped 10 and it didn't matter. And then the last day, he finally brought me extra gravy because it was Monday, and it was a little bit slower. But it was not packed or busy. The guy, you know, was handling like four or five tables, which is kind of an average load. 
I was a server in Laguna Beach, made $500 a day and never expected a tip. In my experience, it was the bad servers that could not stop complaining about not getting enough tips. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of spectrum, you know, how expensive the place is or isn't, how many customers there is or isn't, how good someone is or isn't. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And it's my job as an employer to pay people based on how good they are. So if someone can pack a lot of packages and not make mistakes and do a good job, on average, they make more money than someone who's making lots of mistakes. Yeah. There wasn't any other place to eat. Not at the, uh, not at the, um, the hotel. So the problem, you know, and that's what I don't like about eating at hotels is they basically know they have you. So I'm in town for convention. I got to be at the show by nine for VIP stuff, which means I'm eating at eight. So yes, I could get down to the lobby and hire an Uber to go somewhere. So I got to get up at, you know, I got to be out there at 730 maybe, Uber somewhere, eat, take another Uber back, right? And then, uh, yeah, so it, it's one of those, it ends up costing like, yes, I could probably eat somewhere else and now it costs 50 bucks or I could eat at the hotel and it costs 30. And in my mind, 20 bucks should handle a breakfast in my mind, but you know, hey, you, you win some, you lose some, I guess. Anyone kept half minks, beaks? I find them super interesting and wondering if it has to be species only. It doesn't have to be species only. You can keep them with other stuff, just not stuff they can eat. I always put a small tip on my card when I pay and then leave the bigger part of the tip in cash. Uh, we do that. So if Katie and I go out to eat, we only pay in cash um, for tips. But as a business... I can't tip in cash because I don't have a receipt for it. And so it's way harder to, why are you taking cash out? Oh, I'm leaving it as tips. Oh, sure you are. You're probably doing X, Y, Z. So, <coughs> yeah. I don't, wait, I don't know. I don't like the idea of paying people different things per performance. I just pay everyone 20% regardless. Yeah. I mean, to me, that's the most illogical thing I can think of. So, like, a car that doesn't run would be the same value as one that is brand new and does? Like, what if someone spilled your food on the floor, spit on it, scraped it back onto the plate, and threw it onto your, your, your table? Like, that's clearly a worse experience than... Uh, Someone that came over, took a picture because it was, you know, the kid's birthday, brought him out an extra thing, made him feel super special. Like, those are just different things. You know, I think the gray area is actually where someone, like, it's pretty uh, the same. Like, hey, this person brought me my food, and it was fine, it was good, and this person did that. I think they should be paid the same, yes. But I, I do think there are times when it's, you know, like, what if... What if you had both those waiters just two days in a row and you're at the same hotel, you get the same experience, and one of them, the first day, you get your bits and gravy, it's great, they brought you the extra gravy, everything like that, and you tip them and they get their 20%. The next morning, it's their brother, and their brother is sitting on their phone, waits 20 minutes before they take your, your drink order, get you some coffee or something, and your food order. And then... It takes an extra 20 minutes to get your food to the table and you've left an like 30 minutes longer than the previous trip and you can see that they're not busy. You can see all of these things and they're just on their phone. Does that person deserve a tip the same as the other person? In my experience, in my head, I'm like, no, it shouldn't be the same. Out of guilt, I will still leave a tip. But in my mind, I'm like shouldn't be this way, shouldn't be this way, it should, you know, and now I realize I'm advocating for exactly what Planted Goldies is saying here, in that I just want the, um, 
I just want to pay for my food, right? So if the if the bits and gravy are twenty five dollars instead of eighteen, in both those examples, the one that was on their phone and made me take an extra thirty minutes gets the same wage as the other person does because the employer will decide how much they make and I paid the $25 either way, right? I guess I hope that over time, the business owner would go, hey, our customers are happier with the first employee as opposed to the second employee. Maybe I can get the second employee to not be on their phone and make it timely and they can make the same amounts of money. That's the hope. I guess I don't wanna be the one that has to go, hey, you're good or you're bad. Because I'm there to eat. I'm not there to analyze, could they have done better? Were they doing things right? Weren't they? Did they put their hairnet on? Didn't they? Did they wear a glove? Shouldn't they? Did they wash their hands coming out of the bathroom? I don't know. That's not my job. My job is to consume these bits and gravy and move on. So. Yeah. Welcome the Faka guy back what we needed. I know it's illogical. My wife fights me sometimes, but I give the person 20% regardless. Yeah. And I, so I think you're like me in that you do it out of fear. And like, I don't think that's the right thing. Like you shouldn't buy a gift for your wife, let's say for Christmas out of fear that she'll leave you if you don't. I think it's much better of like, ooh, maybe you buy a gift because you think they'll like it and it'll make them happy. And that's kind of the, how I feel about tipping. It's like, I don't want to have to tip out of fear. I would rather tip because they did a great job or I'd rather just pay the original price knowing they get paid fairly and they like working there, whatever that is. And so I, I do think you're probably like me in that even when I really, really, really don't agree, I'm going to leave a tip just because I'm like... It's out of fear of like the last thing I need is like someone now saying Aquarium Co-op or Corey is such a bad person, they didn't tip me, right? It's, it's more out of fear. Now, I'm talking about cor corner cases here because most people do a fairly good job at their job. So, hey, I don't run into it all the time or anything. 10% is also weird. If you buy two totally different price dishes, one would get a bigger payout than the other. Same service. So why do we do it? Yep, there's a lot of arguments to this. You know, we run into that all the time. And uh, I don't really have a great answer. I'm sure you can find arguments. Oh, I could see that a bit. Okay, I see. Um, you know, the, the argument I've seen is like, well, if you pay more for the food, typically you're there longer. You make it more of an experience. And that's why. But I'm not sure. Can't stay in business with bad employees? Yeah, I, I, I think that's a true statement over a long period of time. Yeah, you know, you're, you're only as strong as the workers and, and all of that. And yeah, I think it's, I think it's going to be, you know, here in the Northwest, I think it's going to be a hard thing of if you can go to McDonald's and get 18 or $19, or you can go work at a restaurant and get 15 plus tips. Like if you're not very good at that, you can go be not good at, McDonald to make more money. So, you know, and I think that's going to be more of a problem more in other states where, oh, you have $5, you know, minimum wage at a restaurant. If all of a sudden you could just go work at McDonald's and get 18, there's going to be a lot less people doing a good, well, not necessarily a lot less in the pool for that restaurant work, I think. If I don't tip people at McDonald's, who do I tip at Red Robin? Both are food, both are offer sit-in. In theory, in some states, they have a different pay structure. I guess that's why. You know, it it's hard to put logic to it. And at some point, you kind of have to, um, you know, at some point, you have to just go, it is the way it is. You know, as much as I hate tipping, I still do it. And I do hope that someday we don't have to tip. I like tipping if it was exceptional service, right? Um, like I'll tip a contractor. If they make time in their busy schedule to come and fix my thing because my 
fish store can't work without you or whatever, I tip for that. Um, because you're, you're going out of your way to make it happen. But if I, you know, if I, same work, let's say like, well, I need to do a thing. Fit in your schedule in the next five years. I don't necessarily go out of my way to tip a ton because they were able to do it on their schedule whenever it made sense. And if they didn't do anything out of the ordinary, like they just did the work. It's just, you know, same thing. I don't tip when I go buy a glass aquarium. I don't tip going, well, make sure that gets the person that made it at the factory. You just buy it. But if someone, you know, if I someone helped me load it in because it was a big tank and I couldn't have done it, hey, you tip them. Hey, thanks for helping me. You went above and beyond. This didn't include help load it into my car fee. So here's some money. Thank you for that. Everyone sees the wait staff as good or bad with the food unless they don't turn in the order correctly and they're just a middleman. I, I think probably a big portion do. For me, it's almost... Um, for me, it's usually messed up food. Hey, I didn't want onions or I didn't, or I did want extra gravy or I did want this. And I realize that, uh, they're not the person preparing the food, but being that you took the order, I do think there's some responsibility there. Like, let's make sure it was right. And I, I know I have to do that all the time in my business of like, just because I didn't screw this thing up doesn't mean that it's not still my responsibility. Like you paid me to make sure it was correct. And then it wasn't correct. It's still my fault. So, and I, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Probably 30% of all the meals that my wife and I eat are incorrect. Just on average. Normally we don't say anything unless it was something that makes it inedible. Like my wife just will not eat seafood. Just, she'll puke. We'll not do it. So if we order something of like, hey, can we get chicken enchiladas? And they come out as shrimp? Going back. Can't do it. Not happening. And it just happens to be that way too often. So. If minimum wage goes up, the whole pay scale goes up, the entry-level employee should start making close to the same wage as a 20-year veteran does. That, that's, a hard, uh, that's a hard thing to really talk through because, in my opinion, it's probably not the fault of minimum wage going up. It's the fault of the business owner not doing anything, right? So if you work at somewhere for 20 years and the person you hire today makes the same amount of money, to me, there seems to be more of an underlying issue of like, so someone worked there for 20 years, never went up in money. Or you never found a way to get more money out of the customer to raise your prices. Like, or you're an inefficient business that doesn't need to be there. Like, those things do happen, but it shouldn't be so prevalent that, you know, otherwise we should all just make one penny a day and everything costs proportionally of one penny. That's not really how it works. The thing that really makes my brain think is inflation's a thing. But back in my day, an Xbox or a PS1 or 2 or whatever was like $200. Now, they're like $500 due to inflation and some other stuff, right? The biggest thing that my brain goes but the tax is what's different. So maybe it was 8% on my $200 Xbox many years ago, right? And that's $16. And now it's 10.1% on 500. So now the, the government, the, the group pool gets $51 basically. And it's the same product, essentially, close enough. And I wonder if spending has gone up at the same clip. Like, well, it seems like when I talk to government employees that their, uh, their wages haven't gone up 3 or 4x. Maybe products did. Like maybe computers for the employees, maybe materials for the roads and all that went up. But it doesn't seem like, uh, you know, government employee wages went up that much. So, you know, there's definitely weird things to think about all of us with minimum wage and, and inflation and other things. And the more I think about it, the more I see things are always moving. It's just not everything moves like, oh, if this, so, 
hey, why are we paying people $18 an hour? And this person worked here for 20 years makes $18 an hour. That doesn't make sense. It means that the things didn't move in proportion like they should have. That's the breakdown. And there's always going to be these things of like, oh, just like in my business all the time, shipping goes up. And then at some point I raise it. So like shipping went up at the beginning of October. I didn't increase shipping it for you guys at all. But eventually we're going to go, well, okay, they raised it again. Uh, we're going to have to do something about shipping. And so it's not always instantly like, hey, inflation and shipping and this one up. Here's the result right away. It's like, well, let's see if we can do something in our company to combat that. And then if the answer is no, then we change the price. Uh, and I think that's what should be happening in most businesses of like, hey, this is a problem. How can we combat that problem? If we can't, we change, uh, you know, we change the, the price. Do you give homeless on the street with a sign money? No. Nope. We, uh, well, I'll say my wife because I don't really partake in it, but my wife uh, does all our charitable giving. And, uh, you know, I've, I've told stories in the past on when we were both working late and we had long hours from work at the store and her doing that, where one of the reasons I married her is even after a crazy long overtime shift, she had to stop and get gas because she couldn't make it back home without it. And it was like a block from home. She saw some homeless digging in the trash looking for food. She went through uh, the McDonald's drive-in across the street and bought them ten dollars. You know, they're like dollar burgers and chicken sandwiches. I think it was five and five. She then handed it to that gentleman. Came home. It's now ten p.m. at night, and then made us dinner. Right. So she's very, very much more charitable than maybe I'll ever be. I don't know. I mean, we obviously. Well, I shouldn't say I have, we pull our money together, and you know. So I think we're last year we adopted like not adopted. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, she chose to buy presents for like 15 kids that wouldn't be getting presents. So she sponsored all that. We, we try to give a decent amount to, I think one of her places she likes to donate to is cocoon house and then other places. And so, uh, but I don't like handing money to someone who's homeless. Not that I wouldn't help them I don't want to have to do the mental gymnastics in my brain of like, oh, are they just going to go buy drugs? Are they going to do this? And because I realize I'm too lazy of a person to walk in or drive somewhere, buy the food and go back and hand it, I just do, don't do do it. And we funnel it through uh, my wife giving stuff back. So uh, it's the same reason I don't round up at like PetSmart or Petco. Do you want to round up to donate to this? Like, no, I just want to donate myself or, or have my wife do it instead of that. So, and, and it's because I don't want to have to spend the time and fully research, like, is there a tax loophole that is benefiting PetSmart, my competitor, by taking in the donations, being able to write that off, even though it's going to a good thing? Is this actually a good thing? Instead, I can go, you know what? No, the answer is no right now. And then the stuff that my wife has researched and I agree with, let's do that. That sounds amazing. So... Yeah. We're definitely on the rabbit hole of tangents. I should probably uh <laughs> probably cut this off any minute now. Yes, yeah, so my wife is a world treasure in that uh she is very compassionate for everybody, whether it's an animal, whether it's a person, and I mean she married me for crying out loud. She, you know, I'm I'm that was a charity case. She uh, grew up well. Her, she's out there right now. Here's maybe a good example. I don't know if it is, but her mom and sister are out there with her, and they're they're doing up the front of our house with way too much uh, Halloween stuff because she's been advertising our home to come and visit Um for trick-or-treating, making sure she specified we have gluten-free. We uh, can make it so that if your kid has sensory issues, we don't want you know any seizures, all of these different ways. She wants it so that your family could come, and if you're normal, that's fine, or you can give a heads up, and we will accommodate any special needs. Even though we don't have kids, I have 
half a Costco of candy bars and chips and popcorn and uh, freeze-dried fruit and uh, toys in case the parents don't want their kids to have toys or, I mean, uh, candy. Maybe they can't have candy. And so, you know, she's always going, how do we give back? How do we do this? Even though our neighborhood doesn't have a ton of kids, she's, uh, you know, she's going out of her way to spend time and money and energy to do that kind of stuff. So, uh, and I'm lucky. All I have to do is help earn the money to do it and, uh, you know, support her when she needs support. Sometimes I got to help deliver stuff. Um, you know, I got to obviously make sure that it's safe out there when the family's out there doing stuff. So, uh, let's see. Thoughts on State of Magic the Gathering? Uh, I don't know. I, I kind of want to get back into playing some games. It's it's more of a movement to how do I get out of my house and go back to hanging out with people. Uh, Magic the Gathering themselves is a business. Yeah, they're they're making some weird decisions right now, but I think uh, they're trying to navigate the post pandemic economy like everybody else. As I will say to anybody, like, well, they've made it thirty years. They probably have a decent sized war chest of money. They'll probably make it some more. Most, cor most corporate donations are big write-offs. Patagonia CEO donated to charities he made himself to avoid a $2 billion gift tax, except he owns voting shares in the charity. Yeah, I don't know. That's I, I don't like to talk about charity like that that much because there's so much I don't know. And so that, like, I just read that. That statement could be 5,000% true. Could be, you know, a, a Vice article that's completely not true. It could be somewhere in between. I have no idea. And, uh, but yes, there is, there's plenty of ways to do weird things with money and all of that. And, you know, my, my, my hope is that even if that statement is true and like he's donating all this money, it's going and getting filtered through and weird stuff happens. Maybe it inspires somebody, another company to do it, but they don't do that. Right. Like, or maybe it just changes you know, maybe all the news cycle in that story changes the minds of a million people to like, we should preserve nature. And that's, it is a good thing. It's hard to, it's hard to always see things as black and white, a hundred percent or zero percent. And, uh, especially when I can't deduce the, all the in intricacies, I try to go, well, I, you know, I don't know enough to know if what I'm hearing and seeing is true or not. And, uh, I try just to maintain that of like, you only know what you can know or what you've seen or what you've experienced. And you can't know that something is a hundred percent truthful from, oh, I read or heard or someone told me. And so that's why my videos are always like, we're going to test this. Why? Cause I haven't seen it myself. That's why. Oh, uh, let's see. Living in your car sucks. I did it with my cats, but still figured out how to keep my job and get an apartment. So there are ways out of being homeless, but it takes a lot of will and sleep deprivation. I've known, yeah, quite a few people that have been homeless at different points. Um, some have been employees and things like that. Luckily, myself, I hadn't been homeless. Um, I did grow up very poor on welfare and, you know, stayed at a lot of relatives' homes and things like that. But, um yeah, I've been fortunate that I always did have a roof over my head. And, uh, you know, there's there's ways out. Sometimes there's not ways out, though. You know, that's... There's sometimes there's not. But, yeah. Hmm. What's the best way to grow Balbitis hutilati? I put it in my tank with CO2. Only tank that has space with special requirements. Mostly a set and forget a little bit of nutrients and stuff. Um, and just keep letting those rhizomes get huge. Most people with cardboard signs and a sad puppy aren't truly homeless. The people walking down the street that you see in the town every day could be the ones living in their cars and such. I mean, I definitely have seen documentaries and stuff like that on where, you know, like how much money you can make if you pretend to be homeless. But at the same time, uh, 
you know, even part of the problem becomes even if let's say 30% of the homeless people are fake, fake is the word, right? Like they could, they have a normal job, they own a home, whatever it is. It's still hard to be like, well, I won't help anybody because 30% will go to non-good things. You're still 70% good. That's good, I think. So it gets really hard. And that's where every charity, I believe, I truly believe, like I've, I've spent way too much time thinking about this, but true charity in my mind, for me personally, could only exist if I donate money and no one will ever know that I did it and I'll never know who it may have benefited. So I've actually said, this money will no longer be mine. I hope it will go somewhere useful. I'll never get to know where it went, and no one will ever know it was me. I believe that is the purest form of, of charity that I can think of. Because in my mind, to me personally, when I give to charity, there's always a little bit of it that likes the recognition you get. Of like, oh, thank you for helping out, or you got this card, or you got an invite, or something. So there's always a little bit of that that taints it for me. Even though I know I think I'm doing a good thing, I still wonder, like, is this truly charity? So, um, yeah, so that's my own personal definition of, like, I think to truly, truly do charity with the purest intentions, those parameters have to be set on myself to know. Like, yep, I'll never know where it went, and no one will ever know I gave it. That's the only way I think I could do pure, true charity and not doubt myself thinking, did I do it for recognition? Did I do it to make, because even making somebody else, uh, somebody else happy is rewarding, right? So, yeah. It's sad that donating isn't just a good thing. With charities, you always need to research them. Some don't donate properly, giving money versus donating equipment. Some spend tons on advertising. Um, yeah, it's, I, I still think that at a certain, like, very basic level, you kind of just have to make a choice on, are you going to try to help, right? Like, have you ever done anything in life where you tried to help, but you made it worse? Like, I can't think of a good example, but I know most people probably encountered that where, like, I tried to do this thing and then I broke this glass or something. Like you, you tried to help, you make it worse. Um, but I, I still think on some level we're, uh, we're better off trying to have good intentions than making, than never doing anything under the fear of it not being perfect. So I think there is something to that. Um, like even, even uh, my wife, I think was telling me she was researching our local food bank and that they don't really want any of our leftover candy if we have it because they get so many donations of candy that most of it goes unused and they just end up throwing it away. So it can almost cost them money to get rid of it. Um, and it's still way better to give healthier food, I guess, like stuff that um, won't be in excess, which makes sense, right? Like, oh yeah, if, if everybody's done with Halloween and hands over the five gallon bucket of candy, like we still need potatoes and we still need meat and we still need stuff. So, um, but it was interesting to learn like, oh yeah, you're not necessarily helping. Makes sense. Yeah. You don't need candy. I mean, if you have no food, some food is better than none. But if the goal is to help, oh, well, I should help in this way, right? I should try and do, um, you know, it differently. On the plus side, you feeling good about yourself to giving to charity doesn't bother the recipient. In fact, the receivers often love to see the giver enjoying it too. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Um, I, I, usually I try to keep any charitable stuff we do hidden from you guys. Mostly because it, it starts people asking for charity, which I don't enjoy. And mostly because I don't like telling people no, right? Um, because there's lots of important causes all around the world. And there's there's more causes than I have dollars. And making choices is hard. And I don't like doing that. So um, I try to pawn it off my wife. She, she seems to enjoy it, so...
Why don't you deserve to feel good for doing something good? Why does that cheapen it for me? Uh, I mean, I still we still donate stuff, but I just think the highest form of potential charity would be that you wouldn't, no one would know. I think that's the highest level. And I'm not sure that I'll ever be at that highest level. Um, I just think it is the highest possible level in my mind. It's still good to give. And uh, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of why I thought about that so much. I think it was, I think I spent so much time because I was trying to figure out what do I do next in my life, right? Business is successful and I don't really uh, need more money. Like if I make less money, that's going to be bad, but I don't need to like keep scaling money, right? To a point of like, I've got billions or millions. Like that's not, you know, so then... If you, you know, like, what if, oh, I've made the hobby better. I've accomplished my goals. What do I want to do now? And then it's like, okay, well, maybe philanthropy. And it's like, well, I don't know. There's so much, you know, do I want to spend time making sure that people don't think we're paying our board of directors too much? We're advertising too much. We're doing these things too much. And then like, okay, well, what could I do with my money? I could try and make money through Aquarium Co-op and then I could give it away would that truly be philanthropy though? Or is it like, if I tell you guys like, oh, every dollar you spend 20 cents is going to this charity, that's advertising in my mind. And it it's effective and it works. And I'm not saying that I won't even do it someday. I just, I know that that's in my mind actually advertising uh, the way I classify it. And even though it would do a good thing, go to charity in, in the hope. Um, but it's a very useful marketing tactic that, uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm just striving for that perfect charity. Whether I'll do it or not, I'll never know. But uh, I, I usually start from what's the best possible and work back from that. So that's how I got to that point, probably. A 60 gallon big enough for two random goldfish? I think so. Keep up on the water changes and... Yeah, don't feed too crazy. I think it's it's doable. At the very end of like, oh, they're 12 years old and they're honkers, you might be, you might feel a little small for them, but you got a lot of years ahead of you with that. All right. All right. As Mr. Ed says, very little fish content this week. Corey's in a philosophical mood today. It's probably the sign that uh, I need to, to log off. And go, go monitor the Halloween decorations and pet my dogs. And then get ready to clean the studio and everything because I've got Aqua Pros coming over this next weekend to hang out. And, uh, yeah. All right. Looking for last comments that make sense. Sounds like you don't want to take advantage of people who are less fortunate than yourself to me. You don't want to make it about you. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's basically it. I mean, in my mind, like I'm, I'm in a good spot. Let's be real. I own Aquarium Co-op. I got 30 employees. Our products are in 60 stores. Like anyone that starts, you know, like counting the beans and tallying, like, wait, that that's probably a lot of money. It, it's, we do well, right? And so I'm very fortunate. But I remember 10 years ago, or, or maybe, you know, maybe 12 years ago, like very poor, very poor. And so I'm not so far removed that I don't remember what it was like to be like, you know, like Katie and I will talk about things. We used to be, we would try to make it to November at least before we would turn the heat on in the house because we couldn't, uh, well, not couldn't. It was difficult to afford turning the heat on before then, right? And we, we put up, and I probably have pictures of somewhere like, because it was our first aquarium stuff. We put up sheets and stuff at all the doors so that our living room was as small as it could be. And we would just only heat that room. And it would stay warmer if her and I were in there and we didn't have to turn the heat on versus trying to let the heat go out in the whole house, right? And so knowing, you know, and even in the first years of the, the co-op where I was eating top ramen every day behind where Murphy's Tank is right now. And so I'm not far removed from that to know that I'm very fortunate 
I want to give back in the ways that I can, and that's hopefully making the hobby affordable, making people enjoy nature. Whether you have a billion dollars or one dollar to your name, you can kind of appreciate nature, so can I. And, uh, you know, I will try to do whatever I can to make sure the business does continue to do what it does, but not only maximize profit. We do need profit. We always have to have profit. Otherwise, you know, one, one bad mistake, we go out of business, right? My light flops, we're out of business. Um, but I think uh, we can also do a lot of good when times are good. And so we try to do that. And that's why at a lot of the Aquashellas, you know, Aquashellas cost us about $25,000 to do from all the t-shirts, the shipping, all of these things to give out. It is a form of advertising, but it's not nearly as efficient as Facebook ads or other things we could do. But I think it's it's what I want when I was at the show. It's like, why wouldn't they just, you know, I'm advertising. Why wouldn't they give me the shirt? Things like that. So, Ikea has their meatballs, co-op gravy. Yep. I do like the Ikea meatballs. I never get them because we almost never go there, but they are tasty. I've had them at camping before. Mm. Water is life means tanks bring an enjoyable life. There is a quote. Oh, it's on my phone. I can't access it. Let me let me see if my old phone syncs photos or not. There was a good quote that I read today. I was like, hey, I like that. It does sync. Apple, you're amazing. Oh, okay, it did. It did. So it's from Andrew Huberman. If you don't know who that is, it's a guy that basically makes a podcast that works for Harvard, and I think he studies brains. And I only listen to him like a couple times a year, mostly. But uh, this quote that I don't even follow this guy I just came across my I think my Instagram this morning while I was waking up. Addiction is a progressive narrowing of things that brought you pleasure. So that really resonates like, oh, I love aquariums. Guess what? I only live, eat, and breathe aquariums. Like that is the definition of addiction. Happiness. So addiction is the progress of narrowing things that bring you pleasure. Happiness is a progressive expansion of the things that bring you pleasure. So instead of narrowing what you like and becoming addicted to it, you're expanding things that bring you pleasure, bringing you diversity. The former emerges passively, the latter takes work. So passively, you get addicted to things. It takes effort to have a wide scope of things that are bringing you joy, basically. And then the second part of that is a general rule. Beware of anything that delivers high dopamine with minimal effort. Enjoy the little things in life, of course, but keep the amount of dopamine scaled with the degree of effort to reach it. So I... Those resonated with me today because I saw them and I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm feeling like. I got a lot of enjoyment out of going to the movies. The effort was high. The dopamine was fine versus sitting at home and just watching Netflix. So, alrighty. Thanks for hanging out. Long stream. I will see you guys in a video coming up. I'll see you next Sunday. Have a safe holiday tomorrow if you're going to celebrate it. If not, avoid that Monday traffic and we'll see you next Sunday live and sooner in a video. So thank you so much. Let me line up my stuff and uh, hit those done buttons. Why can I not find them? Oh, because I'm in front of myself. That's why. Got to find them all. Crazy house. That's in the way. There we go. All right. We'll see you around. Thanks, everybody.